Welcome to our Sunday coverage of America's Day at the Races. Live action from Aqueduct and from Oaklawn out in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Good to be with you on our Fox Sports 2 coverage. As we close out the week, a lot to look back on from Saturday in addition to what we have coming up on this Sunday card. Greg Wolf alongside the winningest rider in the history of this racetrack, Richie Migliori. Good to be with you, Mig, as we get set for our feature coming up this seventh race today. A lot of ways to go, it looks like. Yeah, very competitive race. And, you know, obviously having a muddy track kind of layers in a whole different dimension to this. But I thought it was a terrific day of racing yesterday and a good competitive card today as well. Well, this seventh, what's up, bro? Outside post here, uh, Linda Rice, of course, out on suspension. Adam Rice going to be filling in. And this horse went gate to wire last time out. Impressive victory for New York bred, allowing to optional claiming company. Four for eight at Aqueduct. Yeah, a horse that has obviously shown a fondness for this racetrack, and he has speed, and Kendrick Carmouche has been riding in just tremendous form. And one of the things I really enjoy about Kendrick's riding is he can bounce a horse out of the gate, and he just gets him into such a comfortable rhythm that their speed is able to really carry. He gives them these little subtle breathers along the way, and here's a horse that's in, in terrific form after basically showing runaway speed two back on New Year's Day. Uh, settled a lot better last time and was able to see it out, and... Having the outside post gives Kendrick a lot of options to let him get into that rhythm the right way. Got a pretty quick horse uh, to his inside as well, who you know, struggled last time out, but we've seen the horse kind of get back to very sharp form. Defusky Island, who is a five-time winner for Rudy Rodriguez. You know, Defusky Island is a really hickory kind of horse. He's five for 24 lifetime. He's 0 for 11 at Aqueduct, though. And that's a glaring, uh, you know, fact there to me. He's a horse that just doesn't seem to have been able to get it done. He is fast. Does it feel like at five years old, the son of Golden Sense maybe has just lost a touch of that speed? Oh, it does. He used to be lightning quick. He, he has faced some really good competition, um, which is difficult. But I, I think he's talented, and it looked like he was – might have been – you're completely going the wrong way, and it looks like he found his way back a little bit, but maybe not. I mean, that huge race he had when he showed so much potential, that 102 buyer, he's not gotten back to that horse. Yeah, it feels like he went to a place that day that maybe he just doesn't want to quite get back to. Sometimes a horse goes so deep into the well, they go, mm, I'm, I'm good. I don't want to go quite back that. Um, and again, that 0 for 11 stat at Aqueduct, although he did run a winning race two back here at Aqueduct going 7 eighths. First level allowance race. We have a debut runner lining up. That's something you do not see, although pretty good horse did a long time ago, which we'll talk about when we get closer to that race, who so I know you remember. Today's action presented by Claiborne Farm. Take a look at what's ahead. Races five through eight on this muddy going here at South Ozone Park, all ahead and plenty of action from Oaklawn on the fast going races four through nine to come from Oaklawn Park. Play it all. Right there, and now our bets get signed up, started. You know by now that $200 deposit match, new customer bonus for new members. Punch that in, bonus 200 at sign up, and you take advantage right there once again at nairabets.com. We've got plenty of action for you on this Sunday afternoon. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back when we return. We'll talk Triple Crown Trail and a thriller down at Tampa that was severely delayed because of tote issues countrywide certainly impacted this race they waited about 40 minutes until they finally got it off and chad brown with another derby contender potentially
Back with you on America's Day of the Races on our Fox Sports 2 coverage. Brought to you in part where you can play it all. Now our bets, bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Go to nowrebets.com. Greg Wolf, Richard Migliori with you here. We talked going to break about that Tampa Bay Derby. Difficult situation that happened you know, across the country yesterday with those tote issues. As a result of that, Tampa Bay was hoping it would get resolved. So these horses were tacked up walking around the paddock at the Tampa Bay Derby for about 35 minutes or so. Finally, they decided to run this race um, as a non-wagering event. And at least when the race finally was run, putting the wagering issues aside, it was a thriller. Came down to a photo finish between the Sam F. Davis winner and Chad Brown's domestic product. Yeah, and it was, you know, five or six horses, five horses in the frame at the wire. They went extremely slow early, uh, just a dawdling pace, a half and 51, and uh, domestic product was able to find room, kind of bullied his way out a little bit, and he came with this relentless kind of run into that slow pace. This is a horse that I really was impressed with when he broke his maiden uh, here at Aqueduct going a mile and a furlong. Gives you the impression that he's going to want to go on, and No More Time is a nice horse. Uh, he, he followed up with his Sam Davis win with another big effort, but I give higher marks to uh, domestic product because he overcame that extremely slow pace. Not that he was far away, but he was in behind it, and he kind of had to muscle his way out. And inadvertently, because of that delay, because of the tote situation, these horses got a couple of races worth of schooling, having to stay in yeah. the paddock for that long. And that'll help them bode well come the first Saturday in May when that paddock is just you know jammed with people and horses and fans, and, and they have to deal with uh, a, a great deal. So... Uh, you know, not a great situation for Tampa Bay or anybody who wanted a wager on the race, but for those horses, inadvertently, it might have helped them. Yeah, meanwhile, no more time. Sounds like he potentially may train up to the Kentucky Derby. Chad Brown saying for your winner here, domestic product, likely the Wood Memorial in New York at the Bluegrass for this horse next, who's still green, kind of figuring things out a little bit. We take a look at that Kentucky Derby leaderboard presented by Spendthrift. Tyler Gaffleone wins this race. His dad won it. 35 years ago on Storm Predictions. Yeah, that's really cool. And I, and I actually got to ride with that. Steve Gaffleone was a good rider in his own right. Tyler has just, he's been good for a long time, but he continues to improve and hone his craft. And he has turned into one of the stronger finishers in the game. I rate him up there in the top five of strength finishing on horses in the stretch. Lots going to change on that leaderboard. We have those 100-point races to come. Check in with Maggie Wolfendale. Maggie, figure-wise, this horse goes backwards a little bit, but as Mig says, you give this horse extra credit for chasing that very slow pace. Absolutely, Greg, as it was run more like a turf race. Uh, we saw a lot of um, passive riding throughout the card there at Tampa Bay Downs on either surface yesterday, and the Tampa Bay Derby was just the same. I mean, 25 and change, 51 to the half. Uh, likely not to get those types of fractions going into the Kentucky Derby, but trainer Chad Brown of Domestic Products citing that, yeah, like you said, Greg, he wants another start for this horse, likely in the Wood Memorial or the Bluegrass, because as he said, he's a horse that needs to race. He needs to improve. He got so much learning experience out of the race yesterday, but to come off of a, a bit of a layoff and go a mile and a quarter, he thinks that his horse needs a start in between the uh, the win yesterday and the run for the Roses. And he's kind of a cool horse, a homebred for Klarovich Stables out, or excuse me, by the their sire and practical joke that they all campaigned as well. And he's one that isn't your typical practical joke because a lot of them are more sprint type horses. He is a big, scopy, rangy horse. So I do think that the mile and a quarter is well within his wheelhouse, Greg. Exciting to see how he continues to progress. I mean, even these horses who were, you sit, you would think the leaders up there who've run the biggest figures, we still, for most of them, need to see it again, I think, before we believe heading into the Derby. Yeah, horses go to the Derby with less prep races than they used to, right? You used to have a more comprehensive campaign even before the Kentucky Derby. But uh, that being said, they're young horses, and they're still changing and evolving. So you like to see a horse like this who will definitely stay. That was the one thing that impressed me even when he broke his maiden. He is kind of a relentless galloper. And I think a mile and a quarter is something that is well within his scope where there's others. I have questions about that. Even closing types, there's a dividing line between that nine and that 10th furlong.
And again, those 100 point races are just a few weeks away now as we gear up for the big ones, including the Wood Memorial here in New York. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back. More coming up from Aqueduct. And we will check in at Oaklawn in just a little bit here from Paula Duca as we get set for their fourth race on the card. Six furlong sprint coming up. $30,000 claiming race for non-winners of two life. And Balsa just missed last start. Experience the adrenaline-pumping, suspense-filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing. Be a part of the action with Naira Vets. into second. Nashville dropping out of it and then collusion illusion. What a spectacular return for Charlatan who will romp in the run happy Malibu stakes by four and a half emphatic lengths. Charlatan ultra impressive. It's a new day for a new king. Back with you on America's Day at the Races on our Fox Sports 2 coverage. Brought to you in part by legendary Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual unusually well. We'll take you out to Hot Springs, Arkansas, fourth from Oaklawn. Our know, first live action from Hot Springs here. 30 non winners of two life claiming race, six furlong sprints, and wide open betting board. Favorite right now, the horse we showed you going to break, that two balsa who missed by a half length at a similar spot last time out. It's a minor jump up in class. Here's the two all choked up. Uh, yeah, turns back in distance after showing a speed going a mile. His sprints lately leave a little bit to be desired. Balsa claimed off of Steve Asmus in last start. Yeah, good effort, though. This is a horse that should be forward and uh, makes the first start off of that claim. More than five, just fifth at this level. Uh, yeah, and not a, a you know, tremendous amount of excuses except not getting back to dirt. Big class dropper in Tarico. Yeah, and, and gets uh, blinkers on, kind of the makeover, that big drop in class with the blinkers. D. Wayne Lucas with Western Gents, one for 19. Yeah, a horse that's got speed, taking a slight drop in class. These are the kind of horses you see Wayne win with quite often. Dutch Mills, second for a lot softer, and then jumped up in class. Yeah, big jump up in class. You get Joey Belmere, an apprentice I've been very impressed with. I thought this horse really interesting, the seven. The last time this horse sprinted, was at this level at Keeneland and was second for 39 winners at two. I, I like this horse a lot. The, the pedigree suggests the turn back is good. Cantharos, the sire, gets 17% with sprinters as opposed to 14% with routers. Cody Rosen, Harry Hernandez with Mahoney Road off since January 1st. Uh, yeah, and should be stalking from the outside. Projects to get a good trip. And then pass line has continued to drop down the class ladder from 40 to 30 today. He had been kind of that slow, steady slide. Another apprentice that I think's ridden extremely well there, Carlos Barbosa, uh, you know, at a low percentage, but I've seen him do things that, may, you know, have impressed me. This horse would surprise me. He just seems like he's going in the wrong direction. Well, we get set to kick things off with our coverage here from Oakland. Let's go live to Paula Duca and Paul. Tough handicapping challenge here in this fourth from Oakland. Yeah, definitely a puzzler to start off the show. Happy Saturday, uh, Sunday to you, Greg, as well as you, Mig, uh, and Maggie. Uh, yeah, a beautiful day out here in 
hot springs. It's going to get a little bit more, a little bit chillier. Sorry, I thought Matt Dinnerman was announcing a, a scratch there. I, I apologize there. This race right here, you know, I'm kind of with you guys. I really like the seven going into this race. Now, coming out of the post parade, he, he kind of broke off away with Chris Landeros. Then he got over to the gap over here to the right, not to the gap, to like the first clubhouse turn. Um, and he dropped him, um, and he kind of was act, acting a little rambunctious. Um, Chris had to use the crop uh, to kind of get him corrected about it, and he, he cowboyed back up. Make, uh, I'll let you tell the uh, the uh, the fans out there what cowboy back up is. It's it's a lot harder than you think, but he got right back abo aboard the seven here, Carnival. And I, I'm with you guys. This horse got the best number sprinting. I'm just a little bit worried with his antics. Now, it was a little bit earlier in the post parade, so hopefully he's calmed down since, and he, and he looks okay on the racetrack. The two horse in here, you know, Balsa, it, you know, when you have a horse that's been in the Brad Cox barn, the Cipriano Contreras barn, and the Steve Aspison barn, it, there's nothing against Wade Rearick. This horse had a clear lead in the stretch and got run down at the 20 level. I, and I, I think the horse is probably the speed in here again, but... I just don't know if you want to trust at three to one. Now, D. Wayne Lucas's horse, the five Western Gent, is getting bet in here, and Mig's kind of right. They protected this horse twice off the claim, and these are the kind of horses that D. Wayne wins with. But sometimes in these type of races, you always go for the droppers, right? You always go for the horses that are kind of you're pr you're prospecting that they're going to move up on the drop. I think the six uh, Dutch Mills for Greg Compton has run back-to-back -back pretty solid efforts. So I'll stick with the horse that's been solid efforts and is a big price. Yeah, 11 to 1, Paul, thanks on that six Dutch Mills. Interesting that, you, you know, Greg Compton claims this horse who just got beat against softer company, but I guess looks at the figures and says this horse fits against better. And he gets in with 109 pounds, and Joey Belmere is very capable of doing that 109 pounds. I'm kind of on board with you, the seven, Carnival. Uh, this horse is a half to El Torino, who is a two-time sprint winner. And again, Cantaros' numbers are good with horses turning back. I, I, I thought he was interesting as well. Yeah, I mean, you just go back to the last sprint in that, that Keeneland race late last year, and then... It's tough to see anyone with better form than that one. We'll see if getting back to sprinting helps him. Let's go to Matt Dinnerman. Here's the fourth from Oaklawn. We're ready to go. And uh, Laroff. Pass line on the far outside broke the best, but is taking back. There's a line of runners towards the lead here. Tarico has the most speed with Western Ghent. These two pretty much together. Balza makes it a party of three. Farther out is Cannaval. Four runners across the track with past the line, just a length off that contentious quartet. Mahoney Road right behind him. Then more than five in the white colors. He's next. Well out in the center of the track, by the way, is Dutch Mills. Dutch Mills way out in the center of the track and is not being persevered with. And towards the back with with him is all choked up. He's down on the rail. Dutch Mills being eased up out of it as they round the far turn. We come back to the lead. They've sorted themselves out. Cannaval has the lead by a length and a half. Bowser's second. Tarico gets a breather, tries to come back on three wide again within two and a half lengths of Cannaval, who cuts the corner, turns for home, still clearly ahead. Pass line in the fourth position. Mahoney Road between horses backing out. Furlong to go. Cannaval in front. On the outside, here's Balza coming with a strong rally down the center of the track and it's Balza and Francisco Arietta storming to the front Cannaval in second coming on late pass line it's Balza with the lead by a head and Balza's going to see it out Balza over Cannaval photo for the show though pass line in more than five well wow, Cannaval was in great position appeared to be going very easily in here under Chris Landeros but Balza able to come and get him and get the second win of his career uh, yeah, nice effort by the runner-up. Bowser, though, is always in good position, making the first start off of that claim from Steve Asmussen. Still look like he came out of that Steve Asmussen uh, car wash. It was kind of interesting watching Carnival in the lead. He was going so easily for a horse turning back from routes. When Chris Landeros first set him down, it almost looked like he resented it. His head came up a little bit, and it looked like he was going to be well beaten. And when he got passed by your winner, uh, Balza, he actually dropped his head and ran on again. I, I, I think he's a little bit of a tricky horse to ride. Meanwhile, back here in New York, overwhelmingly the one to beat. This guy right here, Temper Metal, Rob Atris, Dylan Davis, one to four on the board. Of course, it was just second. 
against a little bit tougher spot. New York, but allowance optional 45 on a muddy sealed track. Dylan Davis back aboard. Yeah, get uh, Dylan Davis, who's been riding in terrific form, taking that drop in class. And usually, Rob Atchison's horses look the, the part. His horses are always well turn, turned out in the paddock. Incredibly short price on this horse. Um, several races to go back to that if he repeats it, she's going to be incredibly tough. I thought there were a couple of other ones to give a look to, though. Well, I think a lot depends on how this race kind of plays out, right? It doesn't appear to be a tremendous amount of speed signed on here, and Temperamental can be forward. I just don't think Temperamental is a great name for a racehorse. You don't want your racehorses Temperamental, do you? <laughs> Unless they're really good. I guess you probably don't care, right? That's true. This is true. <laughs> Some of the good ones are very temperamental, aren't they? Yeah. They, well, they have their own personalities. They get strong personalities. What about the rail horse? And, and that win last time, at least sort of going in the right direction and, and picking up that fourth win of her career. Yeah, it comes off is. a really nice effort last time. Um, Meravilloso and has to work out a, a trip from the rail, though. Ruben Silvera. Back aboard. Eros's girl, double-digit odds. Yeah, dropping back down in class would have to improve. There's Maggie at 7.01. Uh, Maggie showed good speed last time. Could have a say in how, uh, how this race is run. Big favorite with Dylan Davis. Warming up nice. Yeah, just making a lot of sense, really, You know, on, on the drop in class. Ruby's in time. Big number here for Jimmy Ferraro. Yeah, it has races to go back to, but those were on the turf. I, I got to see it on the dirt. And then, uh, sorry, darn that song on the outside for trainer Rachel Sells could not handle Miravilloso last start. No, but I think kind of holds the key to the race because this horse can flash really good speed. And does this horse maybe entertain your favorite temperamental up on the pace? Late pick four begins in this race. There you see that pool. Four minutes to post to put something together. You can follow along with all the stats on the trainers, jockeys, horses by downloading free Equibase Pass performances at naira.com slash TV schedule. Get your free PPs now. There's the big favorite, one to four. No one really being brave enough to say it's not going to be Temperamental's day here. For Rob Atris, let's take a look back to October 19th. Uh, yeah, uh, Temperamental showing that... Uh she can kind of sit just in behind horses and was just very game, came up the inside. You see the leader trying to tighten things up just a little bit on her, but she was having none of it. She didn't get intimidated whatsoever and kind of ran on. And it really does look like any one of her good races is just too good for our opposition here. She's much the horse to beat. We're going to head downstairs to Maggie. Maggie, she's being bet like she's invincible today. Is that the case? Based upon her record, it would feel that way, right, Greg? Um, it, she's just run consistently faster than any of her competition as she does take that drop in class, albeit off the voided claim. So that may, might give you a little reason to be uh, cautious when taking two to five, one to four, whatever she's going to go off at whatever it is, it's going to be a very short price. But Rob Atris does know how to play the claiming game. And at the end of the day, she just can't quite get through um, or keep competitive at that second level allowance race, especially as we are, albeit doesn't quite feel like it today, heading towards spring and summer when that type of condition uh, usually does get a little bit more deeper. So we'll see what she does. The front wraps are on. Um, which she has not worn. So that's a little um, reason to be, again, cautious. She looks fine. She always kind of looks the same to me um, in the, the warm-ups and the, uh, the paddock. So I'm going to pick her here. I, there are some intangibles that leave you a little bit uh, leery of taking her. As number one, Miravilloso, maybe she is getting back on track here, and she's one that way, way, way back can run a race fast enough to beat uh, the heavy favorite in temperamental. And Mary Lilioso overall probably looks the best in here. Uh, healthy, healthy coat and weight, though she too puts the front wraps back on. Now, I was doing the early show with Sarah Albadwi, and she had reasons to like number two in here, Eros's girl. I think the last two... Uh, 
last start, she obviously had a major excuse stumbled to her face at the start. And furthermore, I don't think she wants to go a mile. And then the two efforts prior to that here on the Naira circuit, she was against the track um, uh, going wide against gold rails. I So I kind of wanted to hold that start three back against her in this level. But I think she should, A, love the turn back and distance and we're dealing with a fairer racetrack in a field that might be just a little bit below what she faced uh, in that prior 25 for the New York bread. So I thought she was the kind of long shot that maybe you could experiment with a bit here, Greg. 11 to one right now. All right. Thank you, Maggie on Eros' girl, Eliseo Ruiz for Anthony Ferraro. But race and there she is but race absolutely goes through the four. It, it, it does, and ultimately I picked the four temperamental because I, it just has to come down to simply, if I was riding, who would I want to ride? That's who I'd want to ride here. Um, although I think it's interesting, you know, Sarah Elbadwe always has really good reasonings for picking horses that, you know, are big prices, and she digs into it really deeply. Uh, so I always find it interesting, her reasoning behind uh, picking horses like this. And the one, Meraviglioso, you know what that means, right? In Italian, right? Was Marvelous. It Does it? Yes. Was that Hagler's nickname? Man, he was, what a fighter, huh? Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Say it again. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. No, no, this, this horse's oh, name. Uh, Meraviglioso. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I thought this one had a shot. We'll see if this... Going at least in the right direction and waking up a little bit last time out, as Maggie said, too. Had some races, if you go way back, that uh, put her certainly in the mix against the four. But it's temperamental, the one to beat with that recent form. Two to five favorite, Dylan Davis on board for Rob Atris. Liana Stables, we're set for the fifth to kick off this pick four on our Sunday card. Let's go upstairs to Chris Griffin. Ruby's in time. And darn that song. Goes in. All set. And they're off. Speed to the outside from Ruby's in Time and also Darn That Song. Those two hook up and joining them towards the inside. Meta Biglioso is looking for room at the rail, is going to push on through. Eros's girl is in that early mix. Also, there is Maggie, very tightly bunched here as they all want the front end. But it's Darn That Song, who's quickest, has a nose in front. Meta Biglioso is towards the inside, applies that pressure, and now in the clear. Here comes the favorite temperamental. Purple Cap is progressing forward, is right there in third, is in the clear, stalking these two pace setters. Maggie is in between horses, is... Down towards the inside here of Ruby's in time, who holds that fourth position. The trailer is Eros's girl, 22 and 4 for the opening quarter mile. Meta, Biglioso, and darn that song, they continue to duke it out up front. Temperamental with every shot here at two to five is ranging up three wide and now coming after those leaders. Just in behind them, that's Ruby's in time, who's in the blue cap. Maggie moves towards the outside for an outside run and having to pass them all will be Eros's girl. Meta Biglioso is kicking on. It's Meta Biglioso who's in front. Ruby's in time has got the split and here comes Ruby's in time. Temperamental is just making up mild ground right now. The favorite's trying to put that rally together. Meta Biglioso is clear, still up by two. Ruby's in time continues to chase in between horses. Temperamental. It is Meta Biglioso inside that final 16th, and Meta Biglioso gets the victory. Meta Biglioso, then came Ruby's in time temperamental, and Eros' girl in 1 minute 18.50 seconds. Meta Biglioso, Ruben Silvera, back to back wins now for Jimmy Ferraro. Uh, yeah, and a good heads up ride from the inside, and Ruben Silvera, we know, is not bashful about being aggressive. and. The kind of complexion of the race changed completely when the four temperamental did not get off to a good beginning. This is the second horse at a very, very short price we saw today with Dylan Davis, Brick Ambush being the other in the second race, getting left at the post. And uh, I honestly think, though, the temperamental had her chances and couldn't even get by the runner up for second. So maybe she was just not very good on the day. But Meravilloso, she was marvelous. Yes, she was living up to her name in this spot. So back-to-back -back wins, this five-year-old mare by Lemon Drop Kid. Now five for 28 overall. This is going to be a huge upset to close out 
an early pick five, start the pick four. I think you beat a one, a one two to five favorite. That's going to play much, much bigger than four to one. I know this is a horse you liked quite a bit, though, the winner, Maravilloso. And uh, like I said, Ruby's in time out finishing Temperamental. So Temperamental just did not show up with maybe her A effort today. Didn't look like it. Maravilloso liking this off going today on the Sunday card under Ruben Silvera. Aggressive and it pays off. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back. Yesterday, it was a thriller here in the feature. The rematch between Hot Fudge and Can't Hurry Love. Even closer than that neck finish when they met in the Garland of Roses. We'll have more on it when we come back. Stay with us on our Fox Sports 2 coverage of America's Day at the Races. Back with you on our Sunday coverage of America's Day at the Races. Want to remind everyone with a 19% increase on the way in New York Red Maiden purses in 2026. Pays to have a New York Red. Never has there been a better time to have a New York Red full. For information on how to qualify your full, go to nymer.com slash NYreds. Big upset. Two to five favorite defeated. Maravilloso. Marvelous indeed here in the fifth. Back-to-back -back wins for trainer Jimmy Ferraro. Uh, yeah, held that rail position under a hustling Ruben Silvera who has quietly put together a really nice winter here uh, at Aqueduct. And when he asked her, she kicked on again. This is a really good effort for a mayor now that who's uh, put together back-to-back -to -back wins. Temperamental didn't break particularly well. Loomed up like she had a chance and then could not even outfinish the uh, five rubies in time who will round out a Big exacta for you at 19 to 1. Prices, there they are. $10 winner to close out the early pick five. There it is, comes back $492. And to start off again, the late pick four as well. That's the way you like to start things out if you had this one. You need a heavy favorite. Sixth race, six furlongs. Speaking of that New York Red program. New York Red allowance optional claiming field coming up. It's perfect Munnings right now. Adam Rice filling in for Linda Rice, who's out right now in suspension. First off the claims, claimed off of Steve Asmussen last time out. I haven't seen this horse since September 21st. 
Uh, yeah, and listen, we just saw a horse claimed off of Steve Asmussen win at Oakland, but not an easy guy to improve off of. Has a couple of huge races, though, to go back to. So there's some big ability um, with this six-year-old. We'll see if the horse can find it again today off the bench. Yeah, you, you like to see those races in the past. If somebody can get them back to it uh, for years, your best claiming trainers in New York were guys that claimed horses that had that back class of what we like to refer to it as, horses that had races, if they can get them back to, that'll make their investment in the claim worthwhile. Well, Garland of Roses, it was a very tight one-two finish between Hot Fudge, Can't Hurry Love. Those two met again yesterday in the correction. This time it was even closer. This was a tremendous horse race that did not deserve a loser. Um, can't Hurry Love just did everything but win. Her nose was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and Hot Fudge just has a knack for winning. She knows where that wire is. And these two have kind of really started a nice little rivalry here, kind of you know, akin to... Uh, two really nice mares around here years ago, Lily's Moment and Lots of Talc. And Lots of Talc usually getting the measure of Lily's Moment. But, uh, wow, this was way too close to call. When I first watched it, I thought that Can't Hurry Love was able to fend her off. But just did, it didn't look like she was going to get there at any point. No. And, and listen, Trevor McCarthy did a tremendous job. He was able to kind of pack out Hot Fudge and Kendrick Carmouche enough within the boundaries of the rules but it's a matter of where the nose is on the wire. And there you could see, look at look at Hot Fudge's ears, laced back to her head. Like you could see the effort and the demeanor Giving on her, her face. All. It was a neck victory over Can't Hurry Love by Hot Fudge back in that Garland of Roses December night. This time, as you saw there, just a nose, maybe even less in this correction as she does it to her again. She, Maggie, just keeps on winning five in a row now. For hot fudge. And Greg, this is why we love racing. For horses like Hot Hot Fudge, you and I saw it with Free Like a Girl a couple days ago at Oaklawn. They just know how to win. Their determination, their heart speaks volumes. And Hot Fudge, I mean, look at her record. She's now seven for nine on the dirt in her life. Uh, it doesn't matter, six furlongs, out to a mile. She can be effective at any of those distances and really, uh, you know, looking back and, and thinking about them in the paddock, Hot Fudge and Can't Hurley Love really looked phenomenal going into the race. So it's not necessarily a surprise to me that they threw down and put on such a show like they did. So as Richie said, it's it's going to be fun to watch these two going forward, but at least Can't Hurley Love, she has the option of being a New York bred and possibly um, being able to dominate some of her state bred foes, but still lots of love for Hot Fudge. They are an 86 buyer for their 1-2 finish yesterday in the correction, Greg. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. And look, as you said, I mean, Can't Hurry Love, she ran too good to, to lose that race yesterday. She hopefully gets another shot at Hot Fudge and eventually, hopefully she gets her chance to get her picture taken. Don't you think rivalries like this kind of start to capture people's attention, right? You you want to see two good horses that there's not a lot separating them ability-wise. I mean, Hot Fudge has been getting the best of it so far, but it's been very, very competitive. And, uh, you know, uh, rivalries, I think, really do inspire people and kind of get them excited. No, it's fun to see. And, you know, obviously it's not the, the glamour division like the three-year-olds on their way to the Derby, but to have them within this circuit where those who watch it, you know, on a regular basis get to see this, it's fun. And like, like Maggie said, too, Can Hurry Love also has the opportunity to go back into yeah. New York Bread Company. Although I think it's kind of been proven that Can Hurry Love, six furlongs is her distance. I didn't think she really wants any further than that. But man, they're both just so honest. And like we talk about it quite often, we like our horses the way we like our people, honest and hardworking. We're going to take a time out. We'll be back. We have still coming up the story of a man who's still pretty new to this sport, but he is dominating right now in Hot Springs. Christian Torres, his first win came in April of 2019, and now he's a star out at Oakland.
Corbelis will come on and win it nicely. My leading sire, Quality Road. And here is Corbelis to take the lead. Corbelis on the outside. Here it is, Corbelis. All the best attributes of his sire, a multiple graded stakes winner who's proven at the classic distance with tactical speed and a must-see physical. It's Corbelis who digs his heels in to win the New Orleans Handicap. Corbelis, standing at Walmart. Liam's Map, a two-time grade one winner with six consecutive triple-digit buyers, including a 114 to win the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He's already taking the lead as a sire with grade one winners Basin, Wicked Whisper, Colonel Liam, and Juju's Map, plus multiple six-figure yearling sales and two-year-old sales up to $1.2 million. Proven on the track, proven in the sales ring. Liam's Map, only at Lane's End. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every screen, every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Thanks for spending part of your Sunday with us here on America's Day at the Races as we take you out to Oaklawn. Race 5, post parade here coming up momentarily. Six furlong sprint, Arkansas Breds, $20,000 claim tag, all for sale for that price. Horses who've not won two lifetime as we start with Betty Jo. Uh, well beaten last time in an open claiming race. Now she's back with Arkansas Breds for claiming 20. Missy. Piggy won her third start. It was on turf at Canterbury on dirt. It struggled. Yeah, the races on the dirt leave a lot to be desired. That dare's right. At least her last start, it was a win. That was back in November at Delta Downs. And this is her first opportunity to run against Arkansas Breds. There she is. She's went through the screen. The five miracle shoes. Tom Swear Engine trains. Uh, good speed. And sometimes with lower level horses, speed is a great commodity to have. Tammy Hornsby trains gold strategy. Just one for 18. Yeah, one for 18, but has run races more than good enough to win here. Yeah, including last time out. That was on a muddy sealed track, though. Magnolia May, Tom Vance trains. Uh, this is who I like. Took her 11, tries to break her maiden, but I like that move going from maiden allowance right to claim in 20 against Arkansas Breds and get Joey Belmere. Courageous Cap'n going to step up a little bit in class. Stepping up in class, more of a closing type. Would like to see some pace on. Blondes have Mo Fun, four-year-old Philly by Mo for the money. Uh, yeah, just out of depth going further last time, but still would have to improve. Delta Moon showed some tactical speed last couple of starts. It was a winner last out. Uh, really good speed, and you get Christian Torres, your leading rider. Back to the four. This is Little Burrito, but off since April of 2022. Yeah, very long layoff to deal with, but taking money, like maybe training in a fashion that's been catching people's eyes. And then Dixie Girl 2, big price on the outside. Yeah, big price on the outside. Uh, kind of the last couple races leave a lot to be desired, and that outside post is going to be difficult for her to overcome. That's your field, the favorite, the six at five to two. As you see, the three there, that dares right, who's coming off that soft, lower-level maiden claiming win at Delta Downs in the mud. I want to remind everyone you can earn a $15 bonus today by playing with Naira Betts. Bet $50 each at Aqueduct, Oakland, and Santa Anita. You get that $20 bonus. Whether you win or lose, you do have to opt in, though, to take advantage. Opt in at NairaBets.com. Two minutes to post here in a race that kicks off the late pick five at Oaklawn. What do you think, Paulie? Well, it's an Arkansas bread race, so these races can be a little funky every once in a while, and they can light up the tote board. Now, you mentioned a, a really important thing there, Greg, when you said, you know, gold strategy in here, the six. You know, the horse is one for 18 lifetime. Do you want to take the favorite at one for 18? But, you know, the answer, I guess the question or the gamble that you want to make is, did this horse improve because in, his, in her 18th career start she got blinkers? or is it on the mud? I'm gonna go with blinkers because her other two races on the mud were not that good. That was her career best effort she had last time. I know she's one for 18 like you guys were saying, but I think that if she's ever gonna win, it's gonna be today. She, got, she has to get out of the gate. The blinkers did help her last time break a little bit better. She's had some gate woes and she does have to come from way out of it 
every once in a while. Now, the six, eight horse in here, Courageous Captain, has actually got good numbers, and the last number was really good. Louis Fuentes had a, a, a W yesterday. Another horse that launches from way out of it, but has numbers that can maybe improve. I like the last effort, but one for 17 and one for 25. So, you know, you're looking at the six and the eight, your first, second, you know, co-second choices, and, you, you know, they're one for 43 combined, or two for 43 combined, excuse me. You know, I landed on the four in here, Little Burrito. Um, and the reason why is, Greg, I don't know if you remember two days ago, Thomas Van Berg had a horse named Big Paper. Now, he was off about a year layoff. Now, Big Paper had some back class to go to, and he won the race. Little Burrito is kind of like this compared to Big Paper, that he outlooks the field or she outlooks the field, but she's been away for so long, but she is taking money. Um, and Tommy Van Berg, like I said, is having a phenomenal meet. So I'll land on her because I just can't trust the 6 and 8. And I do think MIG, the 7 or the 10, someone's going to clear in here, but the 7 in here is, are, is definitely a, an option here with Joey Belmer. That's Magnolia May, but Paulie taking a, a mare has not been seen since April of 2022. So we get back to New York. Six furlongs coming up here in this six, nine to two on the six-year-old on your screen. Let's go down to Maggie Speed outside with excellent timing, Maggie. Yeah, he's probably one of the fastest horses early that we see here on the card, Greg. And he is one of two that are coming back off of respective layoffs. I'm not talking about the horse who's taking all the early money, perfect monies, because they're certainly playing the claiming game with him. He is entered for the 45000 and they have him bundled up and covered up. So I'll reserve judgment for once they finally take everything off of him um, and get to him trackside. But number six, excellent timing. Look, he's a horse that I have rarely been a fan of when it comes to looking at him in the preliminaries. But today, at least, he comes in fit. He's strong behind, which is sometimes his problem. He'll sometimes look really weak behind the saddle. Wish he looked better in the coat. The front wraps do go on, Greg, uh, here for this return to the races. He's going to play catch me if you can, but I don't know if I can totally trust him. All right, Maggie, we'll get back to Aqueduct with the post parade coming up. Loading, meanwhile, for the start of the late pick five at Oaklawn. It is the six gold strategy. Paulie mentioned career start number 18, added those blinkers in a much improved effort. Was it the equipment change? It's up for debate. Open for debate, but you know, sometimes just the little things tweaking with horses, particularly older horses that get set in their ways, changes things up for them. Matt Dinnerman with the call here, the fifth from Oaklawn to start this late pick five. See girl two. Your stick see girl two. Eduardo Gallardo, we kick off the late pick five here as Dixie Girl 2 goes in. We're ready to go. And uh, Lara, slow start from Little Burrito, who drops to the back. Delta Moon steps on the gas, leads the way early. That there is right, takes the second position and comes after that leader to press the pace from the inside. Blondes have Mo Fun running in third with Courageous Cap and Wedge between horses. Magnolia May inside of that pair, and Betty Joe makes it a line of four pretty much from the inside. Dixie Girl 2, the gray horse, is next within seven lengths of the lead, a length to Missy Piggy, who's already lost a few spots, joined by Gold Strategy. And Little Burrito from the inside. Miracle Shoes is the trailer around the turn. Delta Moon is first. Delta Moon attempts to clear off, does so successfully on the two path, now gets to the fence and strides a length and a half clear. That dares right, sent along from second. Courageous Captain takes that position, comes after Delta Moon with a quarter mile remaining in the contest. Coming off the turn, it's Delta Moon still clear. Courageous Captain second. That dares right is giving way. Betty Joe trying to rally on. Extreme outside goal. Gold Strategy has eight lengths to gain and a lot of work to do. Delta Moon has a two and a half length lead, is opened up. Courageous Cap in second, then Betty Joe. Gold Strategy, and that there's right. It is Delta Moon coming to the line, and she will prevail. Delta Moon over Courageous Cap in Gold Strategy gets up for third, and fourth was Magnolia Bay. Delta Moon, she started her career 0 for 11. Broke her maiden last time out, now she's two for two. 
Christian Torres, over 50 wins already at this Oakland Park meeting, and there's plenty of meat left to go. And she just got very comfortable, showed good speed. Her ears were up. You could see she was enjoying herself on the lead. I think that's one of the many gifts that Christian Torres brings uh, in his artillery is the ability to get horses into that good rhythm, that good balanced frame, and they're able to carry their speed further. Back to you real quick. We're going to have more on Christian Torres later, but last year, he became just the second jockey in the history of that racetrack to hit the 100 win barrier at that Oakland meet. Now it's a chance to go back to back and do it. He's, keep, he's keeping a torrid pace and you have to give every horse that he rides a chance. You have to upgrade them in your handicap in as hot as he is right now. Well, there's perfect Munnings, former stakes winner and a horse who you know, that race at Saratoga back in 2021, that was a ways ago, obviously, but that was a performance that made you think, especially coming off a bit of a layoff, this horse might turn into something very special. Yeah, and then, then obviously things went a bit awry, right? We haven't seen him uh, since that effort, uh, you know, back in, in September. Sometimes horses run too fast for their own good, right? I, I mean, to see an effort like that and then – Basically, obviously, something went amiss for him to go to the bench after a poor effort. Well, this was two starts back. And, you know, again, he threw in a huge number. He's done it not just that race I was talking about at Saratoga. He had another one in the mud at Saratoga the next summer. And then really three summers in a row. August of 23, this race here was by 14 and a half lengths as an even money favorite. You know, some horses excel in Saratoga, right? We've seen it over the years. Now, you know, it's not four-star Dave level yet, but who knows? Maybe he shows up again this summer, and when you see a horse that's been successful at one particular racetrack, you certainly have to upgrade them there. I think it's got to be the goal, the way he's run there at this point. How will he fare off the bench? We're going to find out soon here. Um, the last time he was seen, got to think something went amiss. Even Money Favorite just did not show up that day. Meanwhile, here's the six. So speed outside. Maggie was touching on this one in her paddock report for Rob Atris. Manny Franco rides long time away. Yeah, it is a long time away. And usually, you know, Rob Atris sources stand out, you know, from a physical perspective, the way they're turned out in the paddock. And, uh, you know, th this was one rare exception. Maggie didn't think he looked as good as, and usually, again, Rob Atris sources looked fantastic. This was a nice effort. I mean, look at look at the way he, he was able to quicken away here. Um, but it's a, it is a layoff, and he's a horse that shows speed. And I've always felt it's a little bit harder on horses that have his kind of speed coming off of layoffs because they have to run pretty much the entire race. It's not like a closer who sits back and then gives you one quarter of a mile. Did you usually see to horses who are inherently just quick and want to be out in front and go get to wire coming off layoffs, they're even sharper? Oh, absolutely. They're fresh. They haven't run. There's a little more nervous energy involved. Um, the one thing that really helps him, though, is having the outside post, six of six, right? Because it allows Manny Franco to just break and put his hands in his neck. Not, you don't have to ask him away. You don't have to get in his mouth. You don't have to correct him because, you know, you're already drawn outside. And it, sometimes you get to sneak that first eighth of a mile. They get into the race the right way, and now – They've got to run five furlongs as opposed to the full six. <laughs> Does this horse have the ability to get loose in here? Disco Dino, a big long shot. The three has some speed. Perfect Munnings. Um, not slow, more tactical speed. What do you think? Well, I, I think I do think he's the most naturally fast horse in the race. I think a lot will have to do uh, with how fresh and sharp perfect money is. Munnings is coming off of that layoff. And Disco Dino, when he's run his A races, it's because he's involved and forward early. And he was fast enough to be chasing a very fast pace, sprinting on the turf in Saratoga. So he, he has speed. Here comes our post parade. And he's coming in fresh as well, Disco Dino. So maybe not a win candidate, but a horse who... <laughs> Wants to take advantage of his best asset. Beach Boy Al, Kendra Carmouche kicks off the post parade. Well, a horse that uh, showed a different dimension last time, closing from well, well out of it. He'd like to see them kind of get involved early up front. If this was Saratoga, he might be one to two. Here's perfect Munnings. Well, I think the layoff, there's things to, to question here. The speedy Disco Dino long shot making his first start of the year. Yeah, certainly has a, a big say in how this race will be run. Here's Be the Boss, Mike Maker Runner, who was beat by What's Up Bro 
would have been a heavy favorite probably in this spot. Well, handicap race on paper, this is who I liked. I think he's tactical and he'll be forward enough without having to be forced into a, a, a duel. Huge number for this horse. Riders regret last time out in a state bred 25 race. Uh, yeah, got it done. And, uh, you know, th this is a lot tougher, though, in my estimation. And excellent timing. The speed, as we talked about, on the outside with Manny Franco off the long time away. Speed's always dangerous, but it is a long layoff that he has to contend with. That's your field for this sixth. Get the inside track on handicapping with Naira Bet's track stats. Want to know the best races to bet to beat favorites at Aqueduct? Track stats has the answer for more stats on Aqueduct and tracks across the country. Go to NairaBets.com. Let's go back to Maggie. Welcome to March in the Northeast. It was sleeting a minute here ago. It's dissipating a bit um, as we're standing by trackside here. Um, but taking a look at Perfect Munnings, who is holding, well, he just went to second choice now, a two to one for Linda Rice. He's kind of a tough horse to judge because throughout his career, he's always one that carries just a little extra flesh, especially around his barrel. So he always kind of has that look of being heavy in his his midsection if you will but looking at him he looks defined he looks strong he looks really healthy i mean super coat and flesh to him um very quiet though uh throughout the prelim so far wish there was just a little bit more alert alertness a little bit more awake if you're going to take a short price on a horse who's having to come back off of a layoff now number one that's beach boy al he is a horse that has some recency coming off of a big upset win at 20 to 1 and as you guys were saying, yes, excellent timing's the likely fastest horse and early leader here, but there's some other quick horses that could force the issue a bit. Maybe Beach Boy Al is one who sets up and gets the right kind of trip as he is coming out of a race that is live. I mean, we saw three next time out winner, winners, including Donegal Surges, who was fourth that day with a troubled trip, come back and run an 89 in his next start. Beach Boy Al looks superb. Now, he's kind of a funny horse. He wears that breastplate. And that's, usually you see that on kind of narrow, one-sided horses. That's not the case with him. He's big, brawny, robust. But he's a horse that has, like, Mount Everest withers. His withers are so prominent, and it's a very sharp slope into his back. So that saddle would be prone to slipping back on him. He always wears that. And I really like what I'm seeing from a horse that I know that last race is a little aberrational, but still looks as though he's doing very well. I'm ultimately going to land on Be the Boss here. Got the race off the freshening last time out kind of had a little bit of trouble shuffled back around the turn then re-rally behind a gate to wire winner in what's up bro who we'll see in the next race and um there's been some horses to come back and run well out of there he looks great he looks so fit like what i'm seeing from him he'll be my selection but a lot of other people's too greg all right maggie thank you kendra carmouche by the way he went with his first two mounts on today's card races two and three so we'll see if he can collect another one here on the one beach boy out uh, yeah, and it was interesting what Maggie was talking about with that breastplate to hold the saddle in place so it doesn't slide back. Usually it is for horses with those narrow withers, but sometimes you get a horse with them big rounded out withers. The saddle have a tendency to slide back as well. I think Kendra Carmouche has been riding in tremendous form. Um, it, you know, this is an interesting race tactically. I, I do like Be the Boss, though. So does the public. Eight to five. Chris Griffin, the call. Here's the sixth from Aqueduct. Goes in. All set. And they're off. Riders Regret has early speed, so does excellent timing. The two outside runners, and there's excellent timing to assume command. Riders Regret is back to second. Down towards the inside here is Disco Dino in third. Be the boss has now moved towards the center of the racetrack, is in fourth. Second to last is Perfect Bunnings in the trailer, Beach Boy Al. They're chasing excellent timing up the backstretch, well off the rail. Excellent timing is in hand. It works towards four furlongs left to go. It's excellent timing still clear. 22 and three for the opening quarter mile. Riders regret continues to chase there for Ruiz. Here comes the move from Be the Bosses. Going to move up on the outside of that one is in third and now challenging for second. Beach Boy Al has a sustained rally from the back of the field. Also right there, Disco Dino and tailing off there was Perfect Munnings, who's the trailer. They're still chasing excellent timing who reaches the top of the stretch still two in front. 
Excellent timing now kicks for home. It's excellent timing. Still trying to hold off the oncoming Be The Boss, who's now straightening up and Be The Boss is coming after excellent timing, who's still got plenty here in the late stages. A furlong left to go. Excellent timing. Be The Boss is going to try one final time. Here comes Be The Boss as they are inside the final 16th. Excellent timing, but Be The Boss, Be The Boss up in time. Be The Boss caught excellent timing. Riders Regret and Beach Boy Al in 1 minute 10.57 seconds. Be the boss, able to get to excellent timing, trying to do it off the long time away on the front end. Be the boss wins for the fifth time in 20 starts. Yeah, be the boss, just, just the best on the day. Uh, was able to rally into position around the far turn and just came coming with that relentless run. Really nice effort from the six. Uh, excellent timing coming off of that layoff. Was able to make the lead nicely with Manny Franco. A lot of race riding going on in the stretch here. Manny. Manny knew who was coming to his outside? Oh, absolutely. You can hear them, <laughs> particularly when the track sealed like that. You can hear those hoof Look beats over your shoulder. How much he floats out here in the stretch. Yeah, he really came out a long way. Now, he was clear until very late when the source gets up alongside him. Now, you're going to see Manny. Watch Manny. He's like, well, I got to correct. And now he takes a hold of him. Uh, the race is over. Uh, and really, it might be even interesting to see a head-on and give people a really a stronger idea of just how far out he came. And explain why Manny's doing that. Well, you're trying to thwart that forward progress of the, uh, the four, be the boss. Not just meet the challenge, but maybe hinder that forward progress within the boundaries of the rules. That's what we talk about. That's what race riding is. It's not switching paths dramatically or playing bumper cars with horses. It's moving out into paths to meet challenges and maybe you know, discourage them a touch. <laughs> In this case, it did not work. Although Manny tried, so keep your eyes pink cap and those yellow silks in front. Manny Franco gonna try, try and make life very difficult on Be The Boss. Well, you see he goes through a left-handed crop here and you keep see that tire path that he's on the track there. Look how far out and just what, look at the horse's hoof prints where, where he started and where he winds up. Now, nothing there would have constituted a foul. That's race riding. When you can do that stuff without making contact or coming out so dramatically or so quickly that uh, you know it would catch the ire of the stewards. That was just within the boundaries of the rules. In the end, though, be the boss, able to get the win. Second off a short layoff for this five-year-old. Again, fifth win, Mike Maker, Dylan Davis, nice guy, stables. Four, six, five, one. Be the boss with the victory. We'll have the prices when we come back.
Back at America's Day at the races, what are you doing June 8th? I will be looking at really good three-year-olds take on the final <laughs> jewel of the Triple Crown. Upstate New York this year at Saratoga. I, I listen, I think it's really cool to have an American classic for three-year-olds run and in my estimation, what is the most classic racetrack in North America, and that's Saratoga with the history there and all the great horses. And sometimes it's fun to do something a little different. Gonna, as a result of it being at Saratoga, it's going to be a different distance. Not a mile and a half this year. It'll be a mile and a quarter. But history obviously made last year. It's still just amazing to think no female trainer had ever won a Triple Crown event. And, and we finally, long overdue, saw it happen last, last summer. Yeah, Jenna Antonucci with Archangelo, your three-year-old champion. And listen, I know there's some people that are up in arms that it's not at the mile and a half distance, but if you dig through the history of the Triple Crown going back to its inception, at times the Preakness was run before the Derby. The Derby originally was run at a mile and a half. The Preakness has been run anywhere from a mile to a mile and a quarter. The Belmont has been run at different distances at times. It's all part of the evolution of things and to get the construction done at Belmont. I think everybody needs to take a breath and soak in the fact that it's going to be held at Saratoga, something we haven't seen a June meeting, albeit a four day like meeting in Saratoga. Overwhelmingly it's excitement that, that is I'm as excited. ticket sales and the lack of accommodations at this point show that, that there is a lot of excitement. Belmont uh, stakes.com slash tickets. If you want to be part of that, just not just that day, the whole week, incredible celebration of racing. A four day celebration of racing at Saratoga, the home of the racing museum and hall of fame. Uh, the history just is, is permeates the place and you can walk through town and the conversations every single night will be what happened at the races that day and what we're looking forward to the next day. It is great to be a part of history. And no doubt some of the conversation that's going to be taking place up there this summer during that week is the reason we're up there in the first place, the renovation happening in Elmont, New York at Belmont Park and the renderings just released earlier this week on what we can expect in 2026 when the new modernized Belmont Park opens. I, listen, I think it's fantastic. Anything new is exciting. Uh, I know, you know, there's always some resistance to change. And listen, nobody has a greater love or passion for Belmont Park than I do. Greg, I literally grew up on the backstretch of Belmont Park. But I'm still excited to see this racetrack, the new Belmont Park, take us into the future. And I, I think it's really cool. And, you know, you think about how big and cavernous Belmont Park is. We don't get crowds on a daily basis that warrant a grandstand that big. And how cold it gets with that glass facade. The, the sunlight will absolutely help warm that building. Uh, and obviously it's going to be enclosed and heated in its own right. I'm excited to see the, the finished product um, again. And with the Islanders... And UBS Arena right there next door. I mean, this becomes one of the most modernized and, and top-tier sporting facility partners, obviously, in the entire country. Well, a a absolutely. And a lot of the New York Islanders have been showing a keen interest in thoroughbred racing. So it's up to us to kind of welcome them in and, you know, kind of tutor them and teach them the game and have that crossover. Of, you know, my two favorite sports, right? Horse racing and hockey. It's a natural for me. They need to get a little stable going here in New York. Although, guys, I'm still a Ranger fan. Sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Back to the race we just showed you. Be the boss. Able to come and get excellent timing. Look, for excellent timing, even a defeat, pretty good effort off the bench. Oh, big effort. He really ran uh, tremendous. And uh, be the boss. Just looked like he was well-placed here. Got the right kind of trip and set up and was able to you know, run down uh, excellent timing. And be the boss is now two tries on off racetracks and they've both been very good efforts never been in this position you see the horse in front you know what they're going to do trying to float out and make it difficult and instead dip down to the inside well you know it, it might have been a mistake but it kind of lose momentum dylan did the right thing keeping his horse on the outside in the clear and you know counting on his horse's recency to overtake a horse coming off a laugh but a really big effort by both the winner and the runner-up five dollars ten cents for the win Riders are a tough spot for this horse and actually winds up third. Let's move on to race seven. Six furlongs, first allowance condition race, and we talked about this at the top of the show. Feature race, 
the speedy Defusky Island. And then what's up, bro? Coming off that gate to wire win last time out. Four for eight at Aqueduct. Five to two right now with Kendrick Carmouche looking for his third on the afternoon. Part of this cross country pick five sequence that begins with the six at Oakland. All right, we'll have more on the sequence coming up. We'll get into that Oakland race as well. When we return, America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2. Coverage continues right after this post parade coming up from Hot Springs next. Experience the adrenaline-pumping, suspense-filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing. Be a part of the action with Naira Vets. Your guide to selecting a stallion for your mare. Step one, make sure he's won a big, famous race. Mystic guy charges away and takes the Dubai World Cup. Step two, he'd better be very good looking. Step three, he must have excited the support of breeders with quality mares. Mystic guy, he's unmissable. Call Darley. The Cross Country Pig Five combines the best racing from New York with top races from around the country in one bet. Find it in your track venue and play every race day. Races are posted weekly at naira.com slash cross country. General admission tickets are on sale now for the Belmont Stakes Racing Festival at Saratoga, June 6th through 9th. Admission is just $10 on Thursday as well as on Sunday for this historic event. Visit belmontstakes.com slash tickets today. Back with you, and we're getting set for the cross-country pick five. Coming up begins with this race here at Oaklawn, the sixth 40,000 starter allowance race at six furlongs, three-year-olds and up. It was started for a claiming price of 40000 or less and have never won a race other than maiden claiming or starter. We start with a one. Big price on the Rail Isles Romeo. Uh, yeah, kind of in a tough position down on their inside with other speed drawn outside. Back-to-back -back wins and jumping up. Big time, figure-wise, but on synthetic, the two. Yeah, he's going to have to show he can do that on dirt. Cold as hell for D. Wayne Lucas. Uh, yeah, horse that also should be forward. Looks like he runs his best when he's involved early. Five to two, John Ortiz, another one who's won back-to-back -back starts, but on dirt here at the meet, Master of Arms. Could be the speed of the speed here, particularly with Ricardo Santana, who allows horses to use their speed. Favorite is the six, J.J.'s Joker. He just won as a four to five favorite, but new barn now. Yeah, and you get the leading rider here, Christian Torres, and he should be lurking from just off the pace. Own the field, six to one, Ramon Vasquez for Mike Maker. Yeah, making his first start for uh, Mike Maker and more of a closing type. Augusta Melody, seven year old, who's been off since May of last year out on the West Coast. Uh, yeah, and had been running six and a half down the hill most recently, but does have dirt form to go back to that would make him competitive. Three wins, seven seconds. Not crazy when horses start racking up twice as many seconds as wins. Well, let's check in with Paulie. Paul, master of arms, trying to make it three in a row at the meet here, and he's done it leading every step of the way those last two. Yeah, he has, Greg. And if you look at his form, he's completely changed his his gate manners. I mean, if you look back at some of his other races, he was just a bad gate horse. But Johnny Ortiz has figured something out because his last two races, he is rocketed out of the gate and basically taken control and basically just made everybody play catch up. You know, his last two races, no one's got within a, a length and a half of, of them. And he's just keeps on going away, you know. He's gone through his conditions. It's tough to go to a 24 non-two. That means 
haven't won two races lifetime, win that, then win a non three. He likes Oaklawn. But like I said, it's just his speed is always there. It's just the gate has always been his issue. And I, I think he's figured it out. I'm kind of with Mig. He could be the speed of the speed, but there is so much pace in this race. And Greg, you and I always talk about sometimes turf speed or even synthetic speed. And we've seen, you know, horses from Turfway and horses from Golden Gate actually be pretty successful here. The two here easy operator. I'm not saying this horse is a major player or could be a major player in here, but I think this horse could be the key to the whole race, to be honest with you, because if this horse has the speed that this horse has been showing on synthetic and it translates and is able to pressure the five around the racetrack. Now, you do have some other horses here, cold as hell, the three. The horse is regressing a little bit, but it's Hall of Famer D. Wayne Lucas. Some of those numbers are regressing, but sometimes they'll pop and run just a giant race. You do have the eight Augusta Melody, who does show some um, uh, some pace too as well. Um, so, you know, JJ's Joker, who I landed on in here, is right what Mig kind of said. I think just maybe lurking right behind the leaders, hopefully not too far back. I don't know if you can make too big of a run, but I mean, at two to one, it's a, maybe it's a tough proposition. But when I look at this race, there's so much pace in this race. If somebody does not get away, there's really only one horse in here that can pass horses, and it's the six. But if the five stays as sharp as he is, he's going to be tough to catch. But I'll go with JJ's Joker. All right, Paulie, thanks. And he, talk, he talks about turf speed. Maybe the eight, Augusta Melody. That horse has been on the lead sprinting on the grass. Yep, more pace in that race. We get back to New York. Seventh race coming up, the six furlong featured seventh race. First allowance condition group. Favorite outside the nine. What's up, bro? Let's head downstairs to Maggie. And Greg, he kind of feels like a tepid favorite in here, but I can't resist. My man authorized number two in here for Bill Mott. He just looks exceptional. I, he looks by far the best physically in this field, and it's not even funny um, or close. Uh, furthermore, it feels like he might be getting the same sort of racetrack that he got two back when breaking his maiden, a wet, sealed surface. And two, it feels like there's enough pace in here where if it comes apart, he's going to be calling. And the fact that, you know, they keep at it with him, obviously is a lovely pedigree. But a horse that is now a five-year-old that does only have now the seven starts, and, and they keep kind of protecting him, which they would, um, these connections. But still, he just looks exceptional here. And, and I think, you know, kind of against it last time, win wide throughout against a day where you wanted to be more inside. Now, we'll get to the elephant in the room or the paddock, if you will. And that's number four, Dreams She Dreams, um, for Bruce Brown, who's not here. Um, I wanted to ask, what's going on? Entering a filly against the boys, and that's not even the, the oddest part about it, a maiden first-time starter in a decent-looking allowance field. I, I don't know, but um, she does look fit. She does look very ready. Yeah, she does get a lot of weight off with the 115 with... Um, Luis Rivera aboard, um, but uh, I I don't know. I, I, like I said, I don't know what's going on here. Taking a little bit of nibbles at the moment at nine to one, Greg. But for me, it's all about authorize. It's just such a strange move to have a first time starter. Forget first time starter. Have a maiden in this race. You win the race. You lose a condition, and you're leaving money on the table. Not only is it a maiden, it's a filly going against Colts. I mean, she's stepping out of, you know, her conditions, obviously. You know, we talk about it often. There, are, Maybe she has tremendous talent, but every sport, you have athletes that have tremendous talent, and they go through, as in baseball, a farm system, right? They play minor league ball. They work their way up to the major leagues. Uh, you know, football, you don't go just boom right into the, the NFL, right? You play college ball. Before that, probably peewee ball. There's a progression, and, and she is kind of going right into the deep end of the pool, if you will. And um, it, it seems very out of character for Bruce Brown. Sometimes those decisions are out of trainer's controls, but I, I, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. See what happens. Dreams, she dreams. Philly facing the boys. Multiple winners in here, and she's making her first ever start. The favorite, though, outside. What's up, bro? And... Take a look back to the good What's Up Bro. He's been pretty good of late. Certainly last time out was very good. 
Yeah, and, uh, you know, again, I think the outside post aids What's Up Bro because it just gives him an opportunity to kind of really find his stride without undue pressure. And he's naturally fast to begin with, and it seemed like Kendrick Carmouche got along, to this, along with this horse really, really well last time. One of the things Kendrick does well, amongst a lot of things he does well, is getting horses to kind of run up into his hands and get into a nice rhythm uh, and not overuse themselves. And uh, that, that was the key to victory last time. Again, Kendrick looking for his third winner on the Sunday card. So we'll get back to this race. We'll bring you the post parade. And as soon as we get riders up, we head back to Oak Lawn for the race that's going to kick off this cross-country pick five. This 40,000 starter allowance, six for a long sprint. Polly touched on it, all the speed that's lined up in this race. Who do you think it best sets up for to take advantage of that? Well, I, I'm in agreement with Paul about J.J.'s Joker. I think this horse is going to be sitting the right kind of trip, particularly if somebody takes on Master of Arms early. One thing we've seen at Oak Lawn, guys are not bashful about allowing horses to use their speed. Matt Dinnerman with the call. Here's the sixth from Oakland. Start of the late pick four here, folks. We're ready to go. And uh, we're off. Pretty good start. Then after the start, J.J.'s Joker took up a little bit, and he drops to the back of the pack. Pretty contentious pace here. There's a lineup for the lead. Master of Arms, he's got company from Cold as Hell. Easy Operator and Al's Romeo inside of that trio. Four still across the track with Augusta Melody right off of them, placed in a good spot in the fifth position. A gap of four lengths back to own the field and a huge break to J.J.'s Joker, who's last well behind, at least 15 behind, maybe even farther than that, as they dart into the far turn. Cold as hell on the three path is a head lead. Master of Arms keeping pace with him. Al's Romeo, easy operator, retreat to third. Now they've been passed by Augusta Melody, who's on the move three wide. Also, Own the Field's getting into the race now. Own the Field in the three path is moving up within three lengths of the lead. And JJ's Joker has been outrun. It appears top of the lane. Augusta Melody on the outside, challenging Master of Arms. Cold as hell calls it an afternoon. Own the Field about to claim the third position with a furlong to go, but Augusta Melody. He got the good setup on the back stretch, and he's taking advantage of that, and he's kicking away under Francisco Arietta. He's going to pick up a second win today. Augusta Melody comes home strong for the Steve Hobby Barn. Master of Arms was second, third home owned the field. Cold as hell was fourth. Uh, this horse, the last time he had been on dirt, it was out on the West Coast against probably some superior runners than he was facing in this spot here. Augusta Melody off since May of last year with the victory. Really good job by Steve Hobby to have this horse ready off of uh, the layoff and set the right trip. You saw there was a scrum on for the lead. He was the horse sitting the right trip. I thought JJ's Joker would be in that position. No, it was Augusta Melody who now has four wins from 19 starts with those seven seconds. Six to one start to the cross country pick five as we get back to New York. And our post parade here coming up momentarily on this featured race where the favorite remains outside three to one what's up bro with Kendra Carmouche here's a look at the five this is Defusky Island we talked about this horse with some huge races certainly that one that just stands out back uh, last summer at Belmont 102 buyer gate to wire win has not been that same horse though no and that, that was a tremendous effort and he had you know some other good efforts nothing in that uh, realm. Uh, and again, I'll just go back to his 0 for 11 at Aqueduct. Um, and every racetrack's a little bit different than others, and some horses maybe just not the same affinity for one surface as, as another. There's the man that will ride him for Rudy Rodriguez right there. That's Ruben Silvera. Let's take a look back January 14th, two starts ago. Our Ciso Dali was in this race as well, the eight horse in today's race. And he put in a good one to Fusky Island, came up just short against a pretty nice horse in Ocean's Reserve. Yeah, o Ocean's Reserve, a horse that uh, has shown good ability throughout his career, a horse that was compiling a lot more seconds than wins, and it looked like he was ready to kind of pull himself up a little bit. Fusky Island was fighting on, and you saw Lane Luzzi uh, on Ocean's Reserve go down close to him to keep his horse interested. Some horses kind of wait on their competition. A good effort from Fusky Island, maybe seven furlongs. Uh, not as good as six furlongs for him. Came back with a you know, kind of a sub, not as good an effort. I don't want to say subpar. Not as good an effort as two back. 
We'll see what, what version we get at Defusky Island this afternoon. Right now, 8 to 1. Pretty nice price on a horse who's had some, some big efforts in the past as you get a look at the Philly first ever start. Tackling boys and tackling, you know, for the most part, multiple winners in this field. Just such a strange spot as we see Defusky go by. There's Got Thunder, who finished ahead of Defusky Island last time out. Uh, yeah, Got, Got Thunder certainly has raised his <coughs> Uh, that make him competitive. He's a half to a horse named Heart to Heart, who is a grade one winner on turf, an earner of over $2 million. Here's a look at Cup 4-1 to one with Dylan Davis. Coming off a really good effort where he also flashed speed. Don't know that he has quite the natural speed, but maybe the inside gives him more urgency. Maggie thought this one won the beauty pageant by a long ways authorized for Bill Mott. Ah, deep pedigree there by Curlin out of Pulpit Mare, uh, Claiborne, and Del Dill Schneider, homebred. Here's the debuting Philly against the boys. Yeah, just kind of picked a tough spot to debut in. To Fusky Island, Rudy Rodriguez, Ruben Silvera. Certainly races good enough to win in his past, but he's never visited the winner's circle at Aqueduct. Got thunder, David Jacobson, Isaac Castillo. Uh, some efforts, too, on his form. Uh, two back, really big effort at a huge price. There's Ryan's Cat, 701. Another horse that at times flashes really good speed and uh, making a nice impression in the yes, warm-up. Yes, yeah. Wow. Uh, Narciso Dali at 6-1. to one. Yeah, turning back uh, in, in distance all the way to six furlongs and would surprise me. Yeah, five to two favor. This is what's up, bro, that basically gate-to-wire win last time out. Four for eight at Aqueduct. Yeah, you see now Ken Kendrick Carmouche was going to warm him up without the pony, and he was getting really, really tough. And sometimes what you'll do is you'll kind of turn a horse a little bit towards the rail to kind of get them to check themselves, and he really overchecked himself there, didn't he? Just to give you your control back, right? They're getting too much into the bridle. You don't want them to run away with you in the post parade. I almost had uh, a horse, uh, student council, I won the Pacific Classic, on run off with me going to the Japan Cup dirt. And that would have been a very embarrassing situation to go that far to get run off within a huge race like that. I took him to the outside rail and turned his head over the outside rail, got him to check himself a little bit, and was able to get, regain control. I had a couple of anxious moments. <laughs> Scary situation. Still the favorite. Five to two. What's up, bro? Let's go back to Maggie. Yeah, he, he was not easy for Kendrick. As soon as he got on the race check, you know, Kendrick usually dismisses the pony person. Uh, I got him, I got him. Kendrick didn't have him. Um, he, it was almost like his, he got his tongue over the bit or he just wanted to straight up run off because he put his head up in the air, straight up into Kendrick's lap, where therefore you have no leverage. You know, it's one thing for a horse to kind of bow their neck and reach downward and be strong. At least you have something to kind of balance yourself and steady and, and brace against them. When they want to run off and throw their head in your face, then you have absolutely nothing. So uh, Kendrick smartly getting back with the pony with what's up, bro. And that's usually typical of a horse that does have that early speed uh, and wants to flaunt it. Uh, What's up, bro? He's fine. He's in great form. Do I really trust him here? No, not necessarily at a short price. Uh, wish he just looked a little bit better in his coat, and I didn't love seeing that, but not going to say it's out of character for him either. As I'm a little interested in Narciso Dali here, turning back in distance. I always thought that shorter is better for him, and he's another one like my pick authorized. I could capitalize on you know the pace kind of coming back to him a little bit, maybe having a target to run at. Great energy in the paddock, great energy out on the racetrack. Like what I'm seeing from him, he's very healthy as well for Chris Englehart, who is having a decent aqueduct meet as well. But guys, it's all about number two authorized for me. Maggie has continued to love the way this horse looks for Bill Mott with Jose Lizcano. Three to one right now. I always upgrade horses that Maggie likes from a physical perspective. I think, you know, the key when we talk about how horses look is trying to match up their, you know, form line on paper to how they look physically. But anytime Maggie likes a horse, and she even talked about Narcisco Dali, I definitely upgrade them. Favorite, though, and the price coming down even more. What's up, bro, from the outside? Set for the seventh. Let's go to Chris Griffin for the call. What's up, bro? Class to load to the outside. And in. All set. And they're off. 
speed from in between horses to Fusky Islands. Right up there up front, and Cup down at the rail is going to apply pressure out wider. That's What's Up Bro. But now Cup puts ahead in front, and to Fusky Islands right there is back to second. What's Up Bro is settling just off of them in third. Also moving forward, here's Dreams. She Dreams is now secured fourth, authorizes under a drive, is losing some ground. Got Thunder is progressing there with Ryan's cat, Narciso Dali, from the back as the leader. Went 22.48 for that opening quarter mile. It's Cup. Cup is in front with Dylan Davis. Here comes What's Up Bro. It's just ranging up on the outside for Kendra Carmouche. And the front two start to get away from Defusky Allen, who's losing ground in third. Ryan's Cat's trying to rally on. Same can be said for Got Thunder. Narciso Dali from the back. Authorizes trying to rally. Dreams she dreams. They reach the top of the stretch and Cup keeps going. It's Cup, who's back up by two. Cup now sprints for home. What's up, bro? Continues to chase here from second. Defusky Allen is back for more down towards the inside. Not much coming from the back yet as Narciso Dali has a mild rally. Cup is well clear. It's Cup, who's three lengths in front. Defusky Allen has come back now to challenge and take second. It's going to be Cup. Takes him all the way. Cup much the best. Defusky Allen, what's up, bro? And Narciso Dali in a photo with Got Thunder in 1 minute 11.34 seconds. Dylan Davis with another one. Cup for Wayne Potts. And it looked like Tefusky Island it was going to drop completely out of this race. Re-rallies to get second. Nice effort. Yeah, came back on. It looked like the middle of the turn. He threw up the white flag, but then he kind of came back. And that, that was a nice effort from him to get even re-involved to get up for second. Cup, the key was Dylan Davis being aggressive at the break and when you have post one sometimes you just simplify things i've got to go forward where what's up bro that outside post kendrick gave him his opportunity allowed him to run his hands he's a horse that doesn't want to pass horses i think when he wins it's because he you know shows that high speed but cup is very good got a very aggressive ride from dylan uh, like the way he runs kind of stretches his head out and down and really uh covers a, a lot of ground Fight a little bit out of the gate, too, to maintain his position. Cup with the victory. Cooper Cup fans out there. Happy to see this one get the job done. Wayne Potts, Dylan Davis, Bella Blue Racing Stables, and now the fifth career win from 17 starts. You know, we talk about it uh, often. Sometimes post positions dictate how riders ride races and, you know, say, okay, I'm drawn inside. I'm going to be aggressive. If I get outrun, at least it'll spread the field out and give me options. He didn't get outrun, and he was able to take him gate to wire. Seems like everybody is looking to avoid the rail a little bit today. We see everybody kind of drifting out to the 4-5 path. So Cup with Dylan Davis here, 7 to 2, 1, 5, 9, 8 finish. We'll have the prices for you when we come back. Quick, and you get the rail. Makes things easy. You know what you need to do. And Cup does it here in the seventh. We'll be back with the prices right after this. Stick around.
Back with you on America's Day at the Races. Dylan throws that stick better than anybody, doesn't he? <laughs> Feels so, good getting your picture taken on Cup. Gate to wire win. Our winner circle lead in brought to you by Phasic Tipton. March digital sale now through March 12th. Learn more at digital.phasictipton.com. Let's get digital. Cup at 7 to $2, $9.60 for the victory. Fifth win of this four-year-old's career. Let's go down to Maggie. Here with winning rider Dylan Davis, kind of on a roll here, Big D, as uh, Cup, you were very aggressive with him. There were several other horses to your outside that had speed too, but you secured that position going forward. Yes, Maggie, just talking with Wayne here, at, uh, I did mention him that there was other speed in here, Defuski and... Uh, Where is he, by the way? I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, the sales. I didn't, I didn't ask him. But uh, yeah, uh, Defuski and what's up, bro? Uh, but uh, he didn't want me to take away anything from that, so he still wanted me to come out aggressive, and I thought the same as well. Uh, really caught a flyer. Uh, Davuski kind of got a jump on me a couple jumps early, but was able to establish it. The wind was blowing really, really, it really picked up the, the half. I stayed low as I could, and I think uh, he lost his shoe his last race, and he kind of got a little short there. I guess he got a little uncomfortable, but today with the seal track, he, he had all four shoes, and uh, he responded great down the lane. He looks so comfortable. Talk a little bit about that, riding in the wind. Obviously something you have to do quite often here at Aqueduct in the wintertime. What are some of the things that you do as a rider to kind of you know, evade that? Yeah, well, that's just my father telling me a lot of things. Uh, being very as low as you can, pretty much when you're in, in the stretch, you be as low as you can. That's what I did here in the last race because you want to be as aerodynamic as possible. Uh, if you're not on the lead and you're able to track, you would want to be like on a hip of a horse or outside of the horse, depending on the direction. So you kind of use them as like a, like a draft, like a, like NASCAR or something. But, uh, you know, it just helps your horse. Because even when, when that wind starts blowing, your horse it starts like it's, it's hind hinders them very well. And uh, you're just trying to do the best you can with them. No Ricky Bobby needed, though, with Cup today, right? <laughs> Shake and bake. <laughs> <laughs> Shake and bake, baby. Big Dylan, congratulations. Thanks, Maggie. <laughs> All right, Dylan Davis with the hot hand, per usual, here at the Big A, Greg. And I'm sure you felt this way, too. If you're not first, you're last. How, how did you take <laughs> advantage of riding these kind of conditions? Well, I, I, just what Dylan was saying about wind resistance, just get as low as possible. Your, your goal is to become one with that horse. You're not riding him. You're a part of them. And when you're doing it properly, you almost disappear into them like a lizard on a log. You just want to get as flat as humanly possible. And like you said, draft when you can. And uh, Dylan, listen, you've got to be aggressive from the rail. When Dylan's riding his best, he's aggressive. And you see the end result, particularly in dirt racing. Speed is a premium. You want to use your speed if you have it, natural speed. It is a, a terrific weapon and cup, and, and Dylan able to take advantage of it here. Take a look at this cross-country pick five, two legs in, still a long way to go. But you already have a couple of upsets up there. Augusta Melody at six to one, and now Cup at seven to two. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, so we're getting a couple of prices in early here and uh, beat a you know, couple of favorites, but Cup from the inside, simplified things, go to the lead. So flag fall to that's all. 40 maiden claiming six furlong sprints. Going to close out this card here in South Ozone Park. And a few ways to go, but six for Todd Pletcher. This into mischief three-year-old taking a big drop in class is going to make this one a favorite. Oh, yeah, drop in class. We saw Kendrick already win a race early uh, for Todd Pletcher here. And very well-bred son of into mischief. Mozara and Kenner Carmouche will be aboard. Back at Oakland, entry level allowance, mile and a 16th coming up in the seventh. And that's a look at Let's Duet. Kenny McPeak having a terrific meet out in Hot Springs. We'll have Julian Leperu on board. Horse that probably needs a little pace help up front comes from way out of it. We'll be back with the post parade next. Pilgrim Stakes, they come on for the finish. Annapolis by a head. 
It is Annapolis in front. It is Annapolis to win the Coolmore Turf Mile. He's a running son of a gun. Papa Cap now has the advantage. A graded stakes winning two-year-old. Grade one Breeders' Cup juvenile runner-up at two. Multiple grade one placings at three. Finished in the top four in 11 out of 12 starts. And from here on in, it's just a matter of how far. Papa Cap, an easy winner of the best pal. Papa Cap, standing at Walmart. The sun shines bright on Caraconte. His first crops of racing age are showing brilliance on the racetrack with a high percentage of stakes winners. His versatility is evidenced by winners on all surfaces across the globe. Spanderella could not have been more impressive. The sun shines bright on this value sire. Here down 25, here down 25, here down, thank you. Right here, 525,000. Caraconte standing at Gainesway. Back with you on our Sunday coverage, America's Day of the Races on Fox Sports 2. We have the nightcap coming up here in New York. More on the way, including the feature out at Oakland. Greg Wolf, Richie Migliori with you. Going to look back at some of the stakes action from yesterday out at Tampa. Not just the Tampa Bay Derby on the turf. We had three-year-old Phillies in the Great three Florida Oaks. And Waskasu for Bill Mott coming off a bit of a layoff here from off the pace to get the win. Yeah, real nice effort here uh, for this uh, Philly by American Faro. Um, Chiefswood uh, Farm homebred here. And uh, Waskasu is a lake up in Canada, Saskatchewan. It's a resort. Um, so I'm sure she's a Canadian bred that uh, she was named for that. And Junior Alvarado for his main man, Bill Mott. Keep the beat going. Yeah, Mott really credited Junior with the ride in here. Said he gave this Philly just a picture perfect ride to help get that victory and she has been impressive now just three starts on grass two wins a third in another stake but now a grade three win yeah and real nice effort got a nice trip and bill mott always seemed like really comfortable when he has a main stable rider and, and most notably when jerry bailey was riding for bill mott they were unstoppable they had a steady supply of alan paulson horses and obviously the incredible streak and incredible racehorse cigar um but it seems like when he has confidence in a rider, and obviously any rider's going to have confidence in Bill Mott, they just gel. Um, and not since he was riding Jerry Bailey do I see somebody that he seems as comfortable with as he is with Junior Alvarado. really started, I mean, they've been together a long time, but really the last year and a half, Junior Alvarado's really started to blossom. Well, and you know, when, a, when a rider starts winning big races, the magnitude that Junior Alvarado's been winning, you know that you can win those kind of races. So your confidence level goes to a different place. And that's what you're seeing with Junior Alvarado and a guy that is dedicated to his craft. And I always like to see hard work and dedication rewarded. Uh, so, so for me, it, it's fun to watch his success. And not, not just winning for Belmont. We saw him get a pretty rich race uh, victory in Saudi, didn't we? $20 million <laughs> worth. Uh, yeah, real real nice ride there. And uh, incredible Vuscador. Incredible video, too, of his family watching the race at home and, and hem, them rooting for them. And that's what people need to understand, just like any other athlete. There's family and people behind them that are just as involved emotionally and, and rooting them on, even if they're not actually at the event. And to me, I got a really big kick out of watching his wife, his children, rooting dad home. And it, you know, it drives it home too, because obviously being a former rider, you know, your family went through these things with you as well. But well, for you and your family, what was the race that maybe that was the most celebrated in your career? Well, well, for me, it would have to be that Pacific Classic I talked about earlier with Sued Council, particularly because everybody was there. And then after the races that day, Scotty McClellan was my agent. He had a big party on the beach. And uh, if for that moment, all the sacrifice and things you go f through 
all seemed worth it to have ev- all the people you love with you and celebrating that moment. Yeah, special to, to have that family with you and, and celebrate it's such a big race, too. We're going to get back to Oakland. Seventh race coming up. First allowance condition, mile and a 16th event. As we went to break, we showed you Let's Duet for Kennedy Peak. Seems like she's going to need some pace to run it. Is there the pace in this race to kind of help up, help set up that late kick for her? Yeah, th- that's a really good question. And, you know, we very rarely see what I would call paceless races at Oakland. But this race on paper is crying out for someone to kind of control things. Unstable Princess going by. Uh, yeah, drawn inside, but a deeper closing type. Off the claim, triple L's cutter. Yeah, big step up in, in class here. He's going to have to find a, a race we haven't seen yet. Wildwood Bay has struggled at this level the last three starts. Uh, yeah, and stretched out last time off the sprint. She thought she'd have been more forward. Did not show any kind of speed. Did have to steady, though. Uh, she's actually favored right now. Here's Kenny McPeak's Let's Duet. Uh, yeah, again, a closer in a race that doesn't have a tremendous amount of speed. Yeah, with one of the speeds actually scratched as well. Here's the five, Delphia, Norm McKnight. Can be forward, though, with Rocco Bowen. The seven, big price, Marshide Mama. Uh, yeah, is just going to have to find a, a better effort. To the eight, what's to do? Claimed off of Steve Asmus in the start to go. Uh, yeah, another one. I just would have to see a race I haven't seen yet. Malibu Smart taking attention here for the Chris Hartman barn. Uh, certainly a contender, but a, another one with more of a closing type. Did stalk at Churchill with Rafael Bayrano and when he broke maiden. You got to thank our colleague Tom Amos thinking I can steal this race on the front end with Christian Torres. Lacey be good. I think this is the speed. Lacey be good. And Tom Amos is a trainer that understands and appreciates speed. And particularly with that post and Christian Torres, I think she's the one that makes the pace. She's won four in a row as well. Can she get to the front from that outside post? Looks like she's the quick of the quick. Polly, what do you think here? Yeah, listen, on paper, it looks like she's the one that's going to get to the front end in here. And, you know, like Mick said, you, you never really know here because it looks on paper as a paceless race. And I would think the jockeys are kind of reading it the same way. So now you wonder, is there going to be multiple guys that are going to try to go towards the front end. I don't know if she needs the front in here, um, the outside horse for Tom Amos. Now, those races were at Delta Downs where she was heavy favorite in, in there, and she got the job done. But she comes in here with a bullet drill there, too, as well. So she's obviously coming in here um, in good form. Now, the four Let's Duet is your favorite. It, I, I get it. You know, the race three back at Churchill Downs, um, and a lot of other races, would probably get the job done here for this mayor. But... She's almost her worst enemy. She just has no early pace like you guys were suggesting. She needs to have some pace to run into. If not, you know, it sort of hinders her, you know, late kick. Now, the 9 and the 10 in here, I I find the 9 a little bit less interesting than the 10. Now, the 10, obviously, for, for Tommy, is a horse that's won four in a row. He's looking for five in a row. But she has not run well at the bigger racetracks. Delta Downs is this 5 eighths racetrack. Now, Malibu Smart, you could argue she's almost kind of like the same horse as the four. Kind of leaves a lot to get done. She comes from way out of it. And that gets me to the five. Explain to me how Malibu Smart is 9-2 to two, and Delphia, the five in here, is 18-1. to one. Now, look at Delphia. Three starts back, beat Malibu Smart, was chasing Stella Lilly. They went on the mud that day. The horse wanted nothing to do with the mud. Actually, got eased out of that race. They came back. The horse was 60 to 1, and this horse got stopped multiple times. You guys talk there's no pace in this race. I think Rocco Bowen will put the five into this race, and I think the five's got a big shot in here to hit the board. I don't know if she's good enough to win this race, but just the race dynamics at that big of a price, I'm going to give her a big look. Big price from Polly, all right, on 18-1, to 1, Delphia. And we'll see what Rocco Bowen does, how aggressive he tries to be. You know, listen, Paul has such a good handle on Oakland, and, and he's become such a student of the racing there. I will say, though, and I, I'm going to ask him about this when we talk to him a little bit, he's a big Rocco Bowen fan. But I am, too. Rocco Govias, and he would talk to us when I was at Oakland with Paul. <laughs> Back to New York and the finale on this Sunday card as we get a look here at the sixth even money favorite. Muzara for Todd Pletcher. And this will be the first time this horse drops in for a claiming tag. It's been against straight maidens in all five prior starts. 
And you get a really well-bred horse. You give him every opportunity. They try turf. They, and say, okay, this is what he is. Now let's put him in a race where we can make the most of what ability he has. Let's go down to Maggie. Muazara coming in here. Yes, he, he looks the most appealing with that drop in class, with his overall resume. Uh, last time out, wired by Ridgewood Runner, and he. Um kind of got mired back in the kickback and once he got out he was able to run on a little bit um, and he kind of stayed on evenly. Now getting to maiden claimers here, he's a, an atypical type of uh, Todd Pletcher horse or at least the equipment that he uses. He is the one that runs in a shadow roll which I don't often see with Todd's horses and this guy last time my biggest criticism of him was that he just looked weak behind and he kind of has a, a he does. He has a confirmation fault and that he's cow hocked. I mean, you watch the way this horse walks and he actually crosses over it, behind um, when walking. And it, that'll kind of lead to a horse being fairly uncomfortable um, behind. So I, I don't love that about him per se. Uh, but again, he meets the right kind of field here. I'm interested in the first time starter, Mr. Georgie. Uh, reminds me of my dog, George, my other son, um, but uh, is by competitive edge, who does strike at 22% with his debuters, three-year-olds and upward. And the dam was a decent enough dirt sprinter, and she's had three foals to run, and all three are winners. He comes in here, despite Mike Maselli not being known for winning with day first-time starters, he looks incredibly fit here. He is very quiet in the paddock, though. I'm hoping that he does war wake up a little bit once he hits the racetrack. But I just saw a good um, and appealing alternative to the favorite if you think he's vulnerable, Greg. All right. Thank you, Maggie. And, I mean, it's awfully short price. And, yes, it's a drop in class for one of the best barns in our sport. If you want to take even money. Back to Oak Lawn. Loading up. And it's the four here. The big question, do you want to take a short price on Amir? Is going to be so far out of it early where there does not appear to be a lot of speed. Yeah, but, you know, kind of, you know, Paul talked about it. A lot of riders will read the form and go, there's not a lot of speed. Maybe I'll come out running and we wind up getting more pace signed on. I do think the outside runner, Lacey B. Good, has a tactical advantage. For Tom Amos, and we'll see if... That four-year-old filly can make it five wins in a row. The other four are all coming at Delta Downs. This is the Oaklawn debut. Let's go to Matt Dinnerman for the call. One back. Lacey B. Good, your current two-to-one favorite for trainer Tom Amos. Looking for her fifth win in a row. Four wins in a row at Delta Downs. Coming here to Oaklawn. We're ready. And uh, we're off. Malibu Smart out alert. Lay Delphia sent for speed. She's got the lead. Lacey B. Good takes second. Malibu Smart third in the early part with Wildwood by. Triple L's cutter is next. And Marshide Mama approaching the clubhouse turn. Then Unstable Princess, the gray filly. She's alongside What's to Do. And Let's Duet has no early speed. Will attempt to do her best running later. Around the clubhouse turn they run. Rocco Bowen rationing the speed of Delphia now. She's clearly ahead. The margin's a length and a half. Lacey B. Good comes out of the pack, takes the second spot. Wildwood by third as Delphia slows the pace down indeed, approaching the backstretch run. Triple L's cutter Malibu Smart. They're next together. Marshide Mama, Unstable Princess side by side. A length to what's to do. And three more to let's duet down the backstretch here. 24 and one fifth seconds, the first quarter mile. Slow tempo set by Delphia, who's cruising on a two length lead. Lacey B. Good right behind second. And Wildwood buys down on the inside. Marshide Mama getting closer. Malibu Smart being asked to go now. Those two moving and they're joining Wildwood by a joint third around the turn. Unstable Princess is sent to log. Triple L's cutter rides the rail as seven to gain while under pressure. What's to do? Not picking up the pace. Let's do it as yet to pass a runner. Delphia being swarmed in the favorite. Lacey B. Good takes the lead approaching the quarter pole. She's the one to reel in. Lacey B. Good coming off the turn with Christian Torres as a length lead. Wildwood by chasing hard in second. She's got a shot to run down this leader. These two matching up here with a first long to go. Outside Wildwood by. Inside Lacey B. Good not going away. She's very stubborn today and she's turning away Wildwood by. And Lacey B. Good very good today and she's won five in a row when the Phillies and Mares get good. They get really good. Wildwood by was second. Let's do at third. Malibu Smart next. Lacey B. Good. Tom Amos has her on a roll. She's now won five straight in the first outside of Delta Downs. 
Yeah, but she's got the winning habit now. Five for ten lifetime, five in a row. Christian Torres is riding with so much confidence. You saw him with that long hold, standing high in the saddle on the backstretch. Indulged, and Paul, Paul called this shot. The uh, five, Delphia, showing good speed with Rocco Bowen, was able to take over. He didn't fully set down Lacey Be Good until just inside the eighth pole, and he shook off the challenge from the three, Wildwood by. And when a rider's riding with this kind of confidence, the horses feel it. It feeds through their hands, through their reins, right to the horse. And uh, nice effort. And always good to see Tom Amos, our colleague and friend, in the winter circle. Yeah, good for Tom. Back to New York. Riders up momentarily here as we see Lane Luzzi about to get a leg up on conniving. There he is. We've had the story. Dad representing him. Mike, who you competed against for several years. Good, tough rider, Mike, a real, a, a jockey's jockey, a rider that everybody respected in the room. And most of the time, your fellow riders have a better handle on your abilities than you know, the people that are, are, are watching it from the outside. You know who the good riders are, who the tough riders are. You know, and Mike had said he was still riding because he had some things he felt like he still wanted to accomplish in this sport, but now he's finally retired. And now Lane feels like, now I have the chance to accomplish those things for my dad. And I think that's a really cool uh, story. And the fact that they can do it together. And Mike can also be a good mentor, a good tutor for his son. Here's conniving. And this horse continuing to drop back down the class ladder. He'd been at this level before. Hit the board two back. Yeah, his best race came at this level. And it was a good effort. George Weaver Barn with a three piccolo Diavolo. Uh, in flashing decent speed. A rare claim. George Weaver claiming this horse two back. Second time starter classic kingdom for Mitch Friedman. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a bit green on debut. We'll have to improve, but could with a start. First time starter. Sorry, excuse me. That one out. The sixth Muazara. Six to five favorite. Uh, yeah, dropping in class uh, you know, would make a lot of sense here, obviously. Castle Cove Spirit, big price for Robbie Davis. He's going to have to improve, particularly off that last effort. Here is Mr. Georgie, the first-timer Maggie touched on for Mike Maselli. Yeah, trained by Mike Maselli, who was a tremendous race rider in his own right. Won the 1974 Haskell and Travers Stakes on holding Patton. And 12-1 to 1 outside, my man Woody, who is the experience of the group. That's not a great thing usually in a maiden claiming race. No, but turning back to that six furlong distance, even though he's stepping back up in class. Post time coming up for this finale for the week. We close things out at Aqueduct here on this Sunday card. Get signed up, started, play all the action. More coming up from Oakland on our program, too. That's the offer. Bunch in bonus 200 for new members. Get that $200 deposit match sign-up bonus at nairabets.com. Get all set up for the final big derby preps we have coming up. And then the Triple Crown, which that third and final leg will be at Saratoga Belmont Stakes this summer, June the 8th. You know, usually we have to wait until July to get to Saratoga. Years ago, you had to wait till August to get to Saratoga. Well, we get an opportunity to get up there in June. Although I'm up there every other week getting my hair cut. How about so. <laughs> that? Belmont Steaks week for an appetizer of the summer. Four days, a celebration of our great sport. Four to five favorites. So this class dropper for Todd Pletcher and a couple of efforts that's obviously going to make him pretty tough in here. Yeah, I mean, he's just faced much better, and he's taking – what seems like a very sensible uh, drop in class. You see him down on the inside here in those famous Shadwell colors, the blue and white. He never looked super comfortable inside a horse's air, right? He was lingering on the wrong lead, got a little bit sideways under Luis Saez, finally got over to his right lead, and then he started to finish up. He was just second best here, but uh, you know, Maggie talked about it. He didn't seem like he was enamored with the kickback last time. I think Kendrick will probably try to get him in the clear as quickly as possible. See if he can complete a three-win Sunday afternoon, Kendrick. Let's go down to Maggie. Yeah, he's trying to chase after Dylan Davis as Mr. Georgie, who he's aboard, is my pick in here. I, I respect Moazara, but just looking for something a little bit more creative. But I do want to talk about a double-digit horse who's making a second start off of a quick turnaround, and that's number four in your Classic Kingdom. In that debut, he was uh, entered against older rivals, and one that actually ran a pretty uh, big figure with a 72 and upside potential. He kind of was just green. He had a wide trip, and he just looks more prepared, fitter overall here for Mitch Friedman. I don't love him, but I just thought there was reasons for him to move forward at second asking. Greg? 
All right, Maggie, thanks. See how this nightcap plays out. Four to five on the class dropper there in the background. Those blue and white silks of Shadwell Stable. Don't expect to see those kind of connections with 40 maiden claimers. I, mean, I just think they're being realistic. You give a horse every opportunity, you exhaust all the options available, and then you just got to go, okay, this horse is at this ability level. Let's place him there. Chris Griffin with the finale on the Sunday card from New York. My man, Woody. Goes in. All set. And they're off. Castle Cove Spirit broke with early speed. So did my man Woody towards the far outside. And here comes Mozara to join them. Mozara hard sent, wants the lead and gets there. It's Mozara who's now in front is up by three quarters of a length. Towards the outside there comes my man Woody at the rail. Progressing, that's Piccolo Diavolo. Castle Cove Spirit broke on top but is now back to fifth. Gets passed by Mr. Georgie to the outside on the brown silks. Towards the back end there is Classic Kingdom, the trailer is conniving. They work into the far turn, 23.30 for the opening quarter mile. Mozara is four to five on the board. My man Woody is within a half length of the leader. These two are three in front of Mr. Georgie, who's alone in third. From the back, conniving, and Lane Luzzi there on the move, while wide. Down at the inside, it's Piccolo Diavolo. It's still Muzara who's in front. They reach the top of the stretch. Muzara and my man Woody to the outside continues to chase, but Muzara's got more. It's Muzara who's back up by two. Muzara is now sprinting home. Still chasing there is my man Woody conniving. He is making up some ground on the grandstand side. Muzara inside the final furlong. Here comes the run from Piccolo Diavolo, also right there conniving. Muzara still has a five-length cushion. It's diminishing, but Muzara's done enough. Muzara. Kendra Carmouche with another one wins the finale. Conniving up for second, then Piccolo Diavolo. And my man Woody. And one minute 12 and four. Three win day, Kendra Carmouche. He, as you said, probably thought he was on the best horse. Public thought it was. Class dropper, just take command early. Yeah, just you know, don't try to get fancy. Put this horse in the lead. You don't have to deal with kickback. Doesn't have to deal with traffic. Not the prettiest or smoothest mover you'll ever see, but he was well spotted by Hall of Famer Todd Putcher. Gets the money. Um, holds off conniving, who put in a nice late rally with Lane Luzzy to be second best, but a very logical result here for a horse taking that uh, drop in class from maiden allowance to maiden claiming. Conniving, trying to make a race of it. Not to be. Four to five favorite with the victory. So Todd Pletcher, Shadwell, and Kendrick. But a pretty big win for this barn in the wood a few years ago. Yeah, and you know, for people that don't know, Kendrick is not a one-trick pony. He came from out of the clouds to win that wood memorial, but he's very- 70 to one? Big price, I don't remember exactly, but he's a he's a rider that, and, and this is what I was talking about when you watch that horse finish in, you know, he's he just not, as efficient a mover, right? A little bit up and down as opposed to, you know, reaching out. And a lot of times with horses that aren't the best movers, you'll see, keep an eye on riders after the finish line, how quickly they pull horses up. That's usually an indication of how they like the way a horse travels underneath them or not. And he had- Uncomfortable trip. Yeah, and he, he had him pulled up within an eighth of a mile. Four to five favorite. Muzara with the victory for Pletcher on the class drop. We'll wait and see if anyone took this horse for that 40 claim when we come back. Prices when we return and more on the way from Oaklawn right after this on America's Day at the Races.
Back on America's Day at the Races, brought to you in part by America's Best Racing for the love of the race. Visit americasbestracing.net today. Lacey be good, Tom Amos. And a good matching filly with Christian Torres. Five wins in a row. First, coming outside of Delta Downs. She was up to the challenge. Yeah, just always traveling comfortably. That outside post afforded uh, Christian Torres the opportunity to just uh, you know, stalk a horse, allowed her to get in a good rhythm. Uh, and then when he finally set her down, we were already inside the eighth hole. When he finally asked her for her best, she found more. A uh, filly that's just really in good form and has uh, really evolved into a nice filly. She probably got another step forward in her, too. Tom's done a great job with her. $5.40 for the win on quite a roll. With a man who's rolling out in Hot Springs, Christian Torres, having an incredible meet. Back in New York to close out the card. Kendra Carmouche, three wins Sunday. Teaming up with Todd Pletcher on the big class dropper. And the one to beat goes off at odds on and leads every step of the way. Yeah, I mean, kind of the right kind of trip for a horse that has sometimes not been as keen to compete when he's in behind horses, amongst horses. Kendrick hustled him away from the gate, put him on the lead, and he kept finding a uh, nice rally from the runner-up, conniving to be second best with uh, Lane Luzzi. <coughs> but just a very well-spotted runner. Listen, we talk about it often. Todd Pletcher's in the Hall of Fame for a reason. Not only is he a tremendous horseman, but he's a very smart manager of his horses and knows where they need to run to be competitive. $3.70 for the win. Pick five, just over $500. Pick six, just shy of 2000 on this Sunday card. So pretty formful Sunday afternoon here in South Ozone Park. You take a look at the cross country. Pick five, follow along with one leg remaining. Logical favorite there. But you had a six to one shot to start things off. Cup, bit of an upset winner as well. See what happens with one leg to go. Yesterday at Oakland, we had no program on Saturday, so we promised to recap all the big action. And the grade two is very prestigious race, certainly. And final stepping stone to that apple blossom, one of the most prestigious races there is in this distaff division. Tiny temper, not a good start out of the gate. Jimmy Graham does not panic. She goes from last to first for trainer Dallas Stewart for the win. Yeah, Jimmy Graham contributed a really cool level-headed ride here. A horse gets away poorly. That's the hand you're dealt. You can't go rushing off after the pace. You just got to let your horse get in their rhythm and just take your time. And that's what Jimmy Graham did, and he's, he's very good at it. And this was a really nice effort from Tiny Temper. And Listen, we talk about Dallas Stewart a lot. I mean, look at him, find the seam here, split horses, right? You know, you, I've already broken poorly. I've got to save all the ground. But this really showed a lot of courage, this daughter of Arrogate, out of a blame mare. Um, and got it done. Nice effort by her with that poor start. Nice effort by Jimmy Graham. And Dallas Stewart always seems to get his horses prepped for a big run when the money's down. And if you're Jimmy Graham, at least you know what you're getting into. I mean, she usually breaks bad and slow, so probably knew he's going to be coming from well out of it and had the plan he would have needed to try and win this race. She's been good. Three wins from five starts now. She's still very lightly raced, and this was coming out of an entry-level allowance to win against grade two company. Yeah, it's a, a big effort. But, you know, like when we talk about pedigrees, and, and obviously this really is deep through the pedigree, out of... Uh, uh, a, a blame mare, blame being a Claiborne Farm stallion who Breeders' Cup Classic winner in his own right by Arrogate. And it underscores how sad it is that we lost Arrogate so young because he has turned into a terrific sire and we're not going to see, obviously, very many fall crops from him. Now, let's check in with Paul. And what do you think of this performance, what we've seen? Again, just five starts now. Paulie doesn't get out of the gate good ever, and now she's already has three wins. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think now finally people believe. You know, her last effort at Fairgrounds, it was kind of one of those one-number efforts, but it was on a sloppy racetrack, and I think a lot of people didn't know really what to do with her. But I'll tell you what, Jimmy Graham, like Mick said, she did not break well. He saved ground all the way down the backside and was able to get up. And poor Misty Vale, my goodness, she is at the wire every time. She ran her heart out as well, and... 
you know, you go back to Hot and Sultry, who was end up being your favorite. And I got to give Maggie um, credit. You know, she said yesterday, I still, or a couple of days ago, I still have my reservations whether Hot and Sultry really wanted to get the distance, and she didn't. She got to the front end, and it seemed like, you know, those horses were all idling, and Misty Vale went to the inside, and Jimmy Graham made a key move to follow Misty Vale, and he got the the... the the uh, Dallas Stewart runner home. And this, I think this horse has got a lot of quality. And you know what? Mig said it right in the head. I think a lot of people thought, okay, the slop helped this horse out. No, going long, being a daughter of Arrogate. And, you know, she's on this great roll now and still it looks like a lot of upside for her. A couple of times she went through the auction ring and she did not sell. Well, it's interesting. You know, one thing when people go to sales to buy horses, they're looking at confirmation. They're looking at pedigree. They're trying to fit all the puzzle pieces. But the one thing that you can't see, you can't define in a racehorse, is what we describe as heart. It's desire. It's who wants to be the herd leader. That's something that's not going to be evident. You don't see it until they start to compete. And obviously, she, she might have a tiny temper, but she's got a big heart. Able to get up and do it now has earned every right to move on to that Apple Blossom, which is that main event in that distaff division at the meet out in Hot Springs. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back. More coming up from Oakland when we return. Eighth race, six furlong sprints, allowance optional claiming field. And there's one of the many contenders here, Excess Magic for Chris Hartman, just second to the brilliant Rivet last time out. Third off the bench today for this six-year-old. Stay with us. Good Magic is off to a meteoric start at stud, having sired two Eclipse Award finalists in first crop Kentucky Derby champion Mage and second crop grade one winning two-year-old Muth. With just two crops to race, Good Magic ranked 21st on the general sire list with nearly 10 million in progeny earnings. Mage's graded stakes winning full brother Doorknock is one of the leading contenders for this year's Kentucky Derby. Good Magic, the classic sire. With you on America's Day at the Races program, brought to you in part by Hill and Dale at Alapa. As we get set for the eighth coming up from Hot Springs, competitive six furlong sprint. As we get to our post parade here in a moment, Excess Magic, the one we showed you going to break right now, the nine to five favorite, along with Gun Pilot at that same price down from the inside uh, for Steve Asmussen, who we'll see first. Christian Torres aboard coming off a win at Fairgrounds. Uh, yeah, coming off a layoff, too. A nice run from this four-year-old son of Gunrunner. I think he take, took a nice step from three to four. Lark's mischief off the claim and off a win. <laughs> and off a big figure, too. And this horse has speed. Uh, Mike Maker for Jay Provenzano's Flying Peace Stable. 99 buyer in that victory. Here's Excess Magic, the favorite. Uh, yeah, good hard-hitting, consistent runner. Good on turf, good on dirt. By Magician, a horse who won the Breeders' Cup turf going a mile and a half. It was third to Skelly too back as well. Uh, Major Blue went by. Here's Tyler's Tribe who for a moment early on his two-year-old year 
looked like he was going to be a superstar. Yeah, this Iowa bred boy, he has blazing speed when he's good. Uh, let's see what version of him we get today. He won five in a row, all Prairie Mer Meadows to start things out, and they put him on the turf in the Breeders' Cup. Here's the eight, Sir Wellington, Mac Robertson. A uh, hard-hidden son of uh, Palace is well-drawn outside. He's going to have to bring his A-plus game here. That's your field for this feature coming up. Let's take a look at Gun Pilot for the Asmus and Barn. And big effort off a long time away on a muddy sealed track at Fairgrounds. Uh, yeah, when, you know, listen, this horse has kept really good company. Obviously, they tried to stretch him out last year to see if they had a Kentucky Derby type horse. They realized they didn't. They turned him back in distance, but he kind of had gone a little bit off form facing very, very uh, tough rivals in races like the Pat Day Mile and the Woody Stevens, but returned off the bench. And we didn't see the best of Gunrunner until he was four. So maybe this is the start of something for this son of Gunrunner. Meanwhile, Excess Magic. This horse just brings it every single time. Doesn't it seem that way? Six-year-old who is as honest as it gets and has faced some incredible competition, including Skelly, a couple of starts back. And that was off a bit of a layoff when he ran third to him. Yes, yeah, Skelly. Then Rivet, who, you know, is also from the Asmussen barn. Um, he's just a hard-knocking, consistent type. 23 starts, 7 wins, 6 seconds, 5 thirds. He's won on turf. He wins on dirt. Um, I find pedigree, uh, you know, bloodlines fascinating. This horse is out of, you know, by magician, out of a mare that won on turf, but also won sprinting. And he definitely kind of got that speed from his female side of his family. But here he is by a horse that won going a mile and a half in the Breeders' Cup turf, was runner-up in the Arlington Million going a mile and a quarter uh, on the turf as well. And then you get a horse that's more of a sprinter type. Every once in a while, it happens 13 times in 23 starts for Excess Magic, first or second, seven victories. But looking at win here at Oakland for the first time and probably getting... Well, arguably, I mean, this is a really difficult field, but those are two very nice ones. This horse has faced the last two times out from the Asmos and Barn. Let's go to Pauly for more. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head, Greg. Let's let's be honest. Uh, I mean, Skelly just missed winning the Saudi Arabian Sprint. And, you know, you could argue right now for the American sprinters, he's probably the fast fastest horse going a quarter mile. And Excess Magic was right there with him, and he just got put away by a superior horse and Skelly and Tejano Twist, who's the kind of horse that always shows up late, came rolling. Then last time against Rivet, Rivet got back in form and actually got a flyer out of the gate. And again, they were running 21 and 3 and 45. Now at 8 to 5, does Ra Rafael Bejarano sit or does he go? Now this horse has shown that he can come from off the pace. And Mick makes such an unbelievable point. Here's a horse that two off the turf events at Churchill Downs um, just turned this horse around, right? And those were races that were never going to be on. And you give Eddie Keneally credit, now Chris Hartman. And this horse is in tremendous form. Now, the one, my goodness, this horse looked unreal, as most Steve Asperson's horses look, gun pilot. And it seems like whenever... You know, Steve backs these horses up. He, he tries them on the, on, the, on the trail for the Kentucky Derby. Did not work out. But every time this horse goes around one turn, you know, he's very, very effective. I don't love the one post, although this is the shortest field. I do think this horse will get, in obviously, some pace to run into. With Lark's mischief to two, I would think the three goes in here. You know, the outside horse in here, the eight, is a very underrated horse. I think he gets a very good draw in here, and he has some good numbers. I just don't know if he has the winning punch. And then, you know, the five major boo for coach, three for six here at Oakland, three of the four wins here. And the source has thrown some good races going short. Now we'll cut back in distance for a mile. And if you like the price at eight to one, I get it. But I just think, I know that the one is maybe an up and coming horse, but you know, the three is just ran into a couple of monsters. So the one's going to have to be another monster to beat the three in here, Greg. There's some really good runners in here. Let's not forget the storyline, too, with a six. Tyler's Tribe, who's 15-1 to one right now. This horse, Iowa bred, won the first five starts of his career, all at Prairie Meadows, all on dirt, sprinting, Mig. And for some reason, the Connections decided to go to the Breeders' Cup 
on the grass in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. Didn't work out. And you can look at the, the next few starts. Caught a muddy track and a stake. Didn't work out. Went to the bench, comes back, went a mile. Probably doesn't want a mile, then gets a wet track and goes to the bench for almost a year. There's, there's excuses, certainly, you can see. We're trying a 91 buyer in August of his two-year-old campaign. There's obviously ability there. Oh, super ability, a super amount of speed. The biggest issue with this horse is that he's had a tendency uh, in, in certain races to bleed, right? So he, he's had that, uh, and it happened last time in the bachelor stakes last April, but he's had a long time to recover from that. It looks like he's been training extremely well. And if you count what he did as a two-year-old and how much they improved from two to three and mature and how much they improved from three to four, if he takes that step forward and they've got that problem, the bleeding under control, you don't know what you might see from this horse. And you're, You'll get rewarded huge price right now. Everyone's forgetting who he used to be at, at 16 to 1. This Iowa bred making his long way to return to the races. But difficult group to come back against. Well, listen, he, you know, he's a horse that won uh, you know, five races from nine starts. So he doesn't have a lot of conditions. He's going to face tough horses unless he was to wind up in a claiming race. And I, I'm sure the connections wouldn't want to, you know, go in that direction for a horse that's been pretty, pretty good to them so far. Feature on this Sunday card from Oaklawn. Competitive six furlong sprint. Gun pilot from the rail for Steve Asmus and the favorite. Let's go to Matt Dinnerman for the call. Princess Magic. Hand to the outside, Sir Wellington. Here's Sir Wellington. We're ready to go. And uh, Laroff, Excess Magic popped out of there for post position number three. Tyler's Tribe off the layoff is quick too. And these two engage one another. Tyler's Tribe quickest clears off. Excess Magic sent along, takes the second spot though. Lark's Mischief down on the inside. Major Blue three deep. Sir Wellington even farther out. And the Purple Cap within three lengths of the lead. And Gun Pilot settles at the back. Four lengths from first to last. And Tyler's Tribe off the rail leads the way. Lark's Mischief on the inside into the turn. He's second. Excess Magic third. Shake it up. Major Blue in the meantime was in tight behind horses. Had to tap on the brakes off of heels. Drops back to the back. Sir Wellington. He's on the move with Excess Magic. And these two are underway after Tyler's Tribe as they hit the quarter pole. Lark's Mischief under a ride back and forth. Gun Pilot takes fifth as they swing off the corner. Tyler's Tribe gives way. He's done. Excess Magic in front here. Sir Wellington on the outside. Right there battling. Lark's Mischief. And now Gun Pilot is let loose on the grandstand side, and Gun Pilot in the three chimneys farm colors streaks past the competition, kicks away, giving Christian Torres a hat trick. Three wins for leading rider Christian Torres. Gun Pilot looking sharp. Excess Magic was second, third Sir Wellington, Major Blue fourth, and Lark's Mischief in Tyler's Tribe. Gun Pilot, he runs to his looks. Steve Asmus and Barn Christian Torres having a big day in the fourth win from nine starts for this son of Gunrunner. This was a terrific effort. Gun Pilot didn't break particularly sharp from the inside. Allowed to settle, find his stride under your leading rider, Christian Torres, and he powered home. This was a really nice effort, and this is a serious racehorse gun pilot. Steve Asmussen, just an embarrassment of riches in his barn with these really good sprinter types. So looking at it from a physical perspective, you'd have to think he would go at least a bit further. And we make so much of Christian Torres and the torrid pace that he's been setting in the jockey colony. This is Steve Asmussen closing in on 50 winners himself. And he's on pace to set a new record for wins at this meet. I believe it was last week, I want to say Friday, was the halfway point of the meet. And he already had well more than the amount of wins to be on pace to set that new record. It's going to be fun to watch. This, this yeah. next couple, what, 32 more days, I think, from last Friday. It's going to have a great chance at it. Are there any records that Steve S. Musson doesn't own or that aren't going to fall to him? I mean, th th this is an incredible pace that he's keeping here at Oakland Park. And obviously, he has multiple divisions in other jurisdictions, but what he's been doing at Oakland from the beginning of this meet has been nothing short of sensational. Three win day for Christian Torres. Let's go to Polly. Want to walk up there? Where far? Are we where we belong?
With winning, sorry, I can't hear right now. With winning trainer here, Steve Asperson, a gun pilot. You got embarrassment of riches of these sprinters right now. Man, this horse powered home, Stevie. He really did. I, I think that for him to overcome the inside draw today, I mean, it was a little bit of a disadvantage. And I think he's going to be ideally suited for about seven eighths of a mile. Yeah probably try to get one more run in him as easy as he did this and this targets the Churchill Downs handicap. You know, how do you hit the reset button on these type of horses? You know, this is a horse that you thought maybe could be on the Derby Trail and then you go out, cut back. What, what do you usually do? You took your time with him. Well, I, very fortunate. It, obviously, he's a lot of animal. He's just a tremendous physical. Sent him back to Chris Baker there at Three Chimneys and did a wonderful job and he just came back in a monster. Well, I'll tell you what, he was monstrous today, and Gunpilot, I would think, is on to big and better things. And Mr. Asmussen is trying to set a record here at Oakland for most wins. Yep, as we just talked about, he is on pace to do just that. This horse, that is a big effort. That's a very good field he beat. It's a really good field of horses, and, and just what Steve talked about, having that inside post so you know you're not going to be as quick as some of these serious sprinters here. Going to have to take kickback. He didn't break particularly well, but, man, when he found his stride, was angled out to the clear, he picked his horses up as easily as a horse can pick them up. This was a really fine effort. A man on board. Picking up his third victory on this Sunday card. He's going to have a big chance for number four on maybe the Philly to beat in the nightcap. One more on Christian Torres and his rocket up top to the standings in Oakland when we come back. One of the many places to visit out in Hot Springs. There's so much to see out there, not just the racetrack. Great destination. Our program brought to you in part, where you can play it all, including Oakland. Naira Bats. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Go to NairaBats.com to get signed up and started. Did you hit any spots around town? I did. I got to see a bunch of the places. Obviously, my favorite restaurant there, DeLuca's, but I went to the state park, went for a hike, went to the Gangster Museum. Uh, it, did it all. I, well, yeah, I was a tourist. I'll admit it. <laughs> Great town. Gun pilot. Uh, he has come back strong as a four-year-old down two for two to start this 2024 campaign. And maybe bigger and better things in his very near future after this. I, I got to think he beat a really crackerjack field here and did it the right way. And, uh, you know, S Steve, his first major objective being that Churchill Downs handicap, and he certainly looks the part. 
cross country pick five ends with gun pilot pretty logical outside of augusta melody and it pays seven hundred and forty dollars not bad not a bad day's pay <laughs> well done if you had it christian torres three win days got a chance for number four coming up in this race to close things out on penzig for carl broberg dropping from 20 down to 10. More on this field in just a moment. As for the man who's going to ride that horse, still relatively new to the sport. Christian Torres had his first mount in the sport back in April of 2019. But through hard work, determination, and appreciation of everything that comes his way, he's becoming a star on the hot spring circuit. I used to play baseball, but I didn't see myself growing up much, so I decided to quit and just finish school. Growing up in Puerto Rico, Christian Torres would watch television with his grandpa and cousins, which would eventually influence what sport he'd pursue. I decided to be in a jockey when I was, I can say, like 10 years old, because I grew up around horses and animals in Puerto Rico. And I grew up watching races with my grandfathers, and they used to take me to the racetrack, too. I fell in love with it. Christian moved to Orlando with his family to attend high school before moving back to Puerto Rico to attend the jockey school. But I was in the exercise rider program. I wasn't, like, in the jockeys. They have the exercise rider and jockeys program. Unfortunately, Hurricane Maria complicated those plans. And I entered the exercise riders program each year. And that was when Hurricane Marie hit Puerto Rico, and I didn't finish it because the racetrack, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't do anything. Christian has had his patience tested with all the detours that have included stops in Pennsylvania working as an exercise rider for two years. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a rough trip, but it's been worth it. He'd win his first race in April of 2019 at Gulfstream Park. Two months later... Christian's grandparents and cousins visiting from Puerto Rico watched him win in the United States for the first time, wearing t-shirts with his picture on the front and our champion written on the back. Torres closed out 2022 with a bang. And now, returning to the Larry Snyder Winner's Circle, jockey Christian Torres. He was the leading rider in two states, Arkansas and Oklahoma, helping him win Jockey of the Week honors. We've watched this guy for a little while, and he's a good young kid and a good attitude. He's got a bright future ahead of him. On December 17th, Torres rode at Oaklawn during the day, and that night he won a stakes race on the closing day at Remington to wrap up his first riding title. Flew to Oklahoma, rode over there at night, came back the same night. It was, it was really tough, and but it was worth it. You know, we got two wins here, one win over there. I love everything. I love the atmospheres. I love the track. I love the people. Since the first day that I got here, I just fell in love, and I love it. With everything that is happening now, and just very blessed. Oakland's 22 and 23 meet will especially be memorable for Christian and his longtime girlfriend, Valerie. They were married on Valentine's Day in Hot Springs with their daughter, Ainoa, by their side. Pretty rapid rise for this young man who just started riding, as you heard in that piece, in 2019, and it mentioned it earlier in the show. Became just the second rider in the history of this track to win 100 races at the meet, and he's, he's got a chance to do it again this year. That was last year. The only other one to do it was Hall of Famer Pat Day. <laughs> Keeping pretty lofty company there with Pat Day. And how about Keith Asmussen in second place in the standings now? Everybody else is, you know, a ways back. Christian's. Like he's heading another torrid pace and getting opportunity with higher profile horses, obviously like Timberlake, we see him in the winter circle uh, from that rebel victory. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if he gets to keep one of these high profile horses for a, a mount in the Kentucky Derby. But it, it, it's been fun and impressive to watch him evolving into a top rider. And one thing Robertino Diodoro said there that stood out, his work ethic and his attitude 
And there's so many things that come together for a young rider to be successful and stay successful. You've got to have obviously a certain amount of natural ability, the ability to work hard, to continue to hone your craft, work hard in the mornings to go out and work horses for people, constantly kind of auditioning for parts, if you will, and having that good attitude, being able to stay level, not too high when it's good, not too low when you have a bad day or you're in a bit of a slump. Obviously, staying healthy is a critical component of this. Riders, you know, prone to having injuries, and it, it's very difficult to rebuild your business and overcome that stuff. Right now, he is in that perfect spot, a perfect balance of everything. And he's in with some big outfits, obviously. Robertino yeah. Diodoro, Carl Broberg. But Diodoro said about him, too, he's, just, he's grateful about everything. and just nothing seems to rattle him. Well, I've seen a lot of good riders, young riders, have success right away, and it goes to their head, and they just don't – they can't maintain it. And people on the racetrack work too hard to put up with a rider that thinks that they've reinvented the game just because they're having success. They want you to be humble, down-to-earth, hardworking, and be a part of the team. You know, there's grooms and hot walkers and exercise riders and trainers that are getting up earlier in the morning than you. You've got to appreciate – each part of the team. See if he can make it number four on the Sunday card. He's going to be on one of the main players in here, Penzig, the 10 horse. For Carl Broberg, who just claimed this horse and it drops down against Easier, was in for 20,000 last time out, hit the board in that race, and now in for 10,000 in career start number five. We'll have more on the nightcap from Oaklawn when we come back on our FS2 coverage. War Dancer, New York's leading turf sire again in 2023 with standouts like Barrage at Saratoga. Here's Barrage with a final surge. Barrage got him. War Saichi dominant on the dirt at Finger Lakes. War Saichi has scampered well clear. War Saichi all the way with the top spot. And Danzig Queen on the tap of the surface at Woodbine. And Danzig Queen will come away and win by a length. Consistently producing winners on dirt, turf, and synthetic. War Dancer, proud to stand in New York. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race from every track on every screen every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. For a time, as many as 350 major league players converged in Hot Springs, Arkansas each spring to prepare for the upcoming season. Ownership felt they needed to boil out the alcoholic microbes. Hot Springs was known as a place that had therapeutic waters, and they came for that reason. And then the ball players turned out to love it because they really not only did get in shape, but they had a great time. By the 1930s, nearly half of all major league teams had, at some point, used Hot Springs as their spring training base. Plus, about half of all prominent ball players visited Hot Springs individually. Babe Ruth used to visit Hot Springs to work his way into shape, a place to prepare for spring training. In fact, the Babe even used the hot healing waters to recover from influenza. This wall at the Gangsters Museum of America in Hot Springs represents the long list of Hall of Fame baseball greats who trained here. The winter storm of 2021 is a reminder of why baseball eventually migrated away from Hot Springs. The rain proved to be a disruption, and sometimes even the cold and snow wiped out valuable practice time. 
Although by the 1930s, most teams moved to Florida and Arizona, Hot Springs would continue to be a destination for players to work out before joining their major league squads for decades to come. Oh, such a cool history with, with baseball, Pauly, and horse racing. And forget those, those healing waters for Babe Ruth. I think if he hit a few pick fives, that probably would have get him right going into the season. Uh, yeah, you're not lying there, Greg. I, I think also a couple cold ones for the Babe. Um, and then, you know, go into maybe one of those spas as well. I mean, it's, it's truly fascinating. The museum they have down here, too, and the Gangster Museum as well. The integration that they had is just amazing because, you know, we kind of live in a world where we sort of thought, you know, back then that a lot of the, the black players and the white players kind of did not integrate, but they did. I mean, at one time, training here was Satchel Paige and, and, and Babe Ruth and, and a couple of the guys from the Kansas City Monarchs that – you know, that I grew up watching, too, as well, Buck O'Neill. But my, me, myself and Buck, you know, Buck was one of the main leaders of the Negro League Hall of Fame. And I got really cl close with Buck as a player. And, and to see his name that he trained here as well. And then you come all the way to the racetrack. And the renderings of the racetrack and the stands are the same from Wrigley Field. So uh, the same architect. So it just goes hand in hand in it, it, it is a fun town. Let's just be honest. There's a lot to do in this town, um, and baseball is a big part of the history. Such a neat place, and you know, so much history in Hot Springs, not just racing, but everything that, that used to go on in that town. You know, we had the piece, too, on the Gangster Museum the other day, and it was, it was the meeting ground for everybody, and it was sort of a you came there, and you knew you were safe. <laughs> while you were in Hot Springs. Yeah, it, it was a safe zone. You'd have to keep looking over your shoulders. It was a, a, a tentative uh, truce, if you will, and, until they went back to their respective territories. But I just think any place that has that kind of history, and obviously Saratoga comes to mind, and the towns are very similar in that respect. Deep history, not just horses and racing, but many other things. But if you go out to a restaurant, inevitably the conversation will be about what happened at the races that day and what everybody's looking forward to the following day. Yeah, that makes it so much fun. That's one of the things why we love going up there every summer, but same kind of vibe, yeah, out there in Hot Springs. Three-year-old picture, you know, a lot's happened, but so much more in these next 100-point races to come. It's going to change everything going into that first Saturday in May as we take a look at that Kentucky Derby leaderboard presented by Spendthrift and a horse-based in Hot Springs, Timberlake, the Rebel winner, atop that list right now for Brad Cox. Some question. That's a question for everybody who wants to get a mile and a quarter. But he at least he proved he could win around two turns for the first time in that Rebel. I, I, absolutely. And there was a lot of things to like about his performance. Uh, the fact that he was in and amongst horses. And as a two-year-old, he kind of showed a propensity to want to get rank or keen, especially when he was surrounded by horses. He settled as nicely as a horse could settle in that rebel. You know, here, here's a horse that's already tipped his hand. He's got a ton of ability. But it's so important not just to have the physical ability, but have the, 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 the mental capacity to race properly, not fight with the rider, wait on the rider's cues. And, we, you know, Christian Torres, we've been talking about him. He got him to settle so beautifully in his hands. And, you know, I give a lot of credit to the team at Windstar and obviously Brad Cox for, you know, working on this horse to get him to do things properly. And, uh, you know, the way he finished, Horses are only going to finish that way if they don't pull and get too rank or keen. Now, on the flip side of that, deterministic was extremely impressive because here was a horse with only one start under his belt last August in Saratoga, and he made a lot of mistakes. He didn't break well. He was somewhat green. He tipped his hand that he had ability because he finished with, you know, uh, 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 he was very resolute in the way he finished, and he broke his maiden. He was a completely much more professional horse in the Gotham. He broke better. He set himself up in position. He traveled in the bridle for Joel Rosario. He split horses and he finished. So to see a horse kind of make that kind of maturation in one start and become a professional, polished, finished racehorse, I think speaks volumes. Here's two colts that have a lot of ability that are going the right way mentally as well. It's not just the physical, you know, continuity. It's also the mental continuity and their preparation. I was most impressed with these two because they took big steps forward 
from a maturity standpoint. Yeah, and I think with, with deterministic too. I mean, you see, you see a lot of two year olds, you know, especially Saratoga over the summer that they run these huge figures, you know, out of the Pletcher Barn, Chad Brown, one, Chad Brown Bar, whatever it may be. Uh, mm-hmm. But this was a horse. There was so much buzz about who ran a good number, not this lights sure. out number, but because of everything he overcame, there was so much hype about him and what he could become. And to see him deliver off a six and a half month layoff, second career start going longer for the first time against great at stakes company. It's a very exciting prospect. Very exciting. And, and one thing that I think people should always look into, you know, obviously speed figures are super important. I'm not, you know, disregarding that whatsoever, but a lot of times you'll see horses get this huge number and they basically ran gate to wire. And what did they learn out of the race? Well, they learn they have speed, they're fast. It's when a horse comes from off the pace like Deterministic did, takes kickback, takes traffic, overcomes some adversity. That's where you learn more about a horse. So maybe the number won't be as fast, but you got to upgrade them because they did it the right way. Get to this post parade coming up for the finale on this Sunday card from Oakland. $10,000 maiden claiming six furlong sprint. And again, Christian Torres, who we just had that feature on, trying to win his fourth on this card today in the public, catching on. Of course, was going to take money anyway, but he's the 9-5 to five favorite. <laughs> she is, I should say, Penzig with Torres, who we'll get to in a moment. I'm going to start with a long shot here, this two. Angelic Vision, who's had three starts, and I guess at least facing easier than she's faced to this point. Yeah, it, it is is easier. Two starts back, actually, that race would make this horse competitive here. And she was 52 to 1 that day. Fourth, beat a little bit more than seven lengths. I'll make that turn here in a moment for this post parade coming up. We do have a couple of first time starters as well. There's another look at Angelic Vision. Accelerate Philly for Aaron Shorter. Get out of my kitchen next door at 9 to 1, 0 for 13. Yeah, a lot of tries here, but this horse does have some speed, could be forward. Can't discount horses in lower level races that have some speed. She's actually favored at this condition last time out as well. She's taboo. Speed with this one as well. Yeah, and you get seven pounds off with uh, Carlos Barbosa, uh, apprentice jockey aboard. Rita's Revenge. This is start number two. She was a big number, but against better in the debut. Against better, showed speed, stopped. Is going to have to improve off of that. Maribel, 0 for 10. Yeah, another one just feels like going to have to run a little bit better to be competitive. Cut back in distance for Patty Gallon. Blinkers on. Has races, though, on the form that would put this horse in the frame if you go back, but it, you'd have to go back to last summer. Two first-time starters next door to each other. Go to the nine first here, 14-1. to one. Uh, Yeah, and we try to let the board kind of help us in these lower-level maiden claimers as Arkansas bet bread. Ultra De La Cruz, rider change on the nine, by the way. The 11, Art Queen for John Ortiz. Uh, yeah, John Ortiz grew up in the shadow of Belmont Park. Is really carving out a nice reputation and living as a horse trainer. Hugo Torres on Baba's Gal gets in from the also eligible list. And actually, you know what? I might have misspoke earlier. Carlos Barbosa was named on this one ar- earlier, and I did not look to see which one he was No, riding. you're right. He was. So, he's on the horse you, right, you mentioned. So I, I apologize. Penzig, Christian Torres. Pauly, can he make it four on the Sunday card? Yeah, he probably could. I mean, this is the horse to beat in here. Carl Broberg, so dangerous off the claim. And the horse has the best numbers coming into this race, whatever kind of metric you want to look at. And, that, and that's why right now he she's currently favored. You know, and she had the, the one hole last time, which is for a horse like her, maybe, you know, a kind of horse that comes from a little bit off the pace. She can be compromised a little bit. You know, in that last race, we saw gun pilot. It just did not matter. But when you come to these lower uh, rung claimers like this, you know, she, she was good last time with Rocco Bowen. Now she gets Chris, Christian Torres. She goes from the John Prather barn to Carl Boberg, who's 23%, and he's just really good off these claims. So she, I think, is the barometer, obviously, in here. Now, the, the Philly right to her outside, the 11, our queen, I loved her last time, and she got dead left. Her, her gait is her nemesis. If she breaks... I honestly think she is the the Philly to beat in here. You know, her, her two back when she went from the 12 hole, she actually was courageous to run third in that race. She just had everything against her. And now she drops in for 10. She just got to has to get out of the gate. If she gets out of the gate, I think she'll be ultra, ultra tough in here. The four, you know, she's taboo for Donnie Von Hemmel, has shown some speed. You know, first start out of Prairie Meadows, this horse actually 
was your second choice. Three next out winners out of that race, and this horse got left, showed speed, and kind of backed up. But that's kind of been her M.O. so far in her three-race career, where she just sort of shows a little bit of speed and, and just, you know, whenever she gets headed, she kind of gives up a little bit. But, you know, when you get in a race like this, she could be dangerous if she can maybe a, a clear group like this. Of the first-time starters, you know, I, I couldn't make a case. I thought the nine looked well on the racetrack. Like you were saying, Walter De La Cruz taking over. And Burl McBride, um, he has a couple horses that has run well. He's been a little bit unlucky. This is a filly by Marco Valeski, the Arkansas bred. And it's getting a little bit money. But like I said, I'm going to land on the 11 in here, our queen. I'm going to give her one more shot. I just think she's the best filly in here, but she has to get out of the gate. So many times people will look at figures and go, well, she's the best horse, this and that. You got to win the race from start to finish, and she needs to get out of the gate. She's taking a big drop, too. She was in for 150000 Maiden claiming at Churchill, hit the board. Maiden specials at Oaklawn at Horseshoe Indy. Now drops from 30 to 10. 5 to 2 right now on the 11. Yeah, de definitely an interesting. You know, th these races are so difficult. And, and a lot of times when we talk about horses running for, you know, lower level maiden claiming, a lot about trips and who is in a position to not get discouraged, not get compromised. They, they tend not to overcome adversity. They're both drawn towards the outside, your favorite, the 10 Penzig, as well as Art Queen, who is getting in a spot that much easier than she's ever faced before. Meanwhile, that man right there, the hot hand today, Christian Torres, leading rider at the meet, 22 up on the next closest pursuer coming into today on the, in the standings. And looks like he's just running away with it. Chance to get his fourth win coming up here. Uh, yeah, and this is a, a, a filly by distorted humor. There's a pedigree there, bred by Shortleaf Stable, John Ed Anthony, who's uh, winningest owner all time in the history of Oakland Park. Now, this horse was claimed away from them. Carl Broberg, 210 wins last year. Kind of knows his way to the winner's circle. Does. Look at what Christian Torres is doing at this meet. Just incredible. The advantage he has. Good good to be obviously be in with Barnes like Diodoro and Broberg. They win a lot of races, as you said, uh, but he's earned it. Yeah, listen, he, he's riding terrific. He's getting the best of it, uh, basically in demand. I really get a big kick out of the fact that Keith Asmussen is second now in the standings, and he has really developed and made a nice impression as a young rider. Yeah, Paulie, let's bring you back in here. We talk a lot about Keith and how much he has improved as a rider, and he's right up there now in second. But Christian Torres, wow, 100 wins last year, just the second ever to do that. It means now he's got a chance to do it again this year. And you know what, Greg, it's, with the phenomenal part about it, he started this meet four for 40-something. I mean, he really started off badly and then just started reeling four, five, six wins um, here and there a weekend, and it just kept on plateauing four in a row. And I think the the thing that set him apart and got him even more confidence, Brad Cox put him on catching freedom, got that horse home. Brad Cox put him on Timberlake, got that horse home. His confidence is absolutely soaring, along with Keith's confidence as well. But I just wanted to mention to Mig and myself, we are now entrenched in the culture of hot springs, let's put it that way. Anthony, Mr. Anthony Valinati, the owner of DeLuca's, has stuck up my jersey, and Mig, they got a picture of you saying, let's get Miggy with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul, we had a lot of fun there, and it's always great when I get to visit with you down there. I have a question for Paul, guys. Did he ever have a beginning of a season as a ball player where you were slumping, Paul, where, where you know you, you just weren't hitting and then turned things around? And, and if you did, how difficult is that, you know, as an athlete to get your confidence where, where it needs to be? I, I, I mean, he went four, like you said, he got off to such a slow start, but he turned it around in a big way. Did you ever have a situation like that? Yeah, 100%, Meg. I think what you end up realizing or try to see in the back of your head, I was always told, listen, once a 300 hitter, always a 300 hitter. You're always going to come back around. I think what ends up happening is, especially in baseball and in this sport, you can fail 70, 75% out of the time, not in baseball, but 75% of the time you fail here, 
you're a success. In baseball, you fail 70% of the time, you're a success. You have to have a short-term memory when it comes to both of these sports, baseball and in, in horse racing. So my thing was, is like, I don't care. Sometimes a broken bat kid, you know, it's pretty funny you said that. Norm Cassidy the other day, he's been having one of those meets where just horses are not getting trips. And he finally got a W and he looked at me, he said, Pauly, I got a broken bat single to right. Sometimes just a little break or a nose bob for a jockey can get you back on a roll. But yeah, we all go to slumps. I tell young kids all the time, Babe Ruth struck out a lot of times, Mick. Just got to keep that belief, and yeah. especially, I mean, baseball is such a – you're going to go through those down times where you struggle at the plate, and Paul Aide knows better than anyone, but such a good hitter that it's going to come back around at some point. My mother-in-law, Rose, gave me a little uh, plaque, and on it it said, Babe Ruth struck out 2,330 times, and whatever racetrack I was riding at, I put that in the locker, and it was my reminder that – Okay, I might have struck out today, but if I keep at it, it'll come around. Just what Paul's saying. So it's interesting he brought up Babe Ruth and then him striking out. Because I, I had that little plaque in every locker I rode in my entire career. Do you still have it? I do. I do, of course, yeah. It's in my tack trunks that are up in my hayloft that so I won't open. I, I guess that's too. That's what makes these great athletes. Because it still it starts to wear on you probably after a while. And you have to fight through that. And, and as a rider, you almost have to kind of reset, stop. And, and when I, I, Steve Coceres told me this, she's a horse trainer and I was my agent. Start riding horses just to get a check. And it, suddenly you're more relaxed, you calm down, you put your, your horses wind up in a good spot without using them, and then you start winning again. Christian Torres leading the way at this meet. He's on the 10 pens. They get a chance to get his fourth winner on this Sunday card. Let's go to Matt Dinnerman for the call. Red Zone Athletics, Carl Broberg. Maribel, Art Queen, and Baba's gal. Those three to round out the field. One back, Baba's gal. Baba's gal goes in. We're ready to go. And uh, Laroff in the finale. Angelic Vision threw her head at the start and drops to the back of the pack. Get out of my kitchen. Aggressively ridden to get to the front. Has a narrow lead here. Rita's Revenge is right there to press the issue in a three-deep secret city down the back stretch. Penzig runs in the fourth position. Well off the fence, but kept out of harm's way. Stalking the pace. She's taboo moves inside of her. Then comes Patty Gal. She's six lengths behind. Already sent the long approach in the turn. Two better than Art Queen. Angelic Vision, Mayor Bell are next. Baba's gal is one runner beat. Jonesboro Hurricane, the first time starter at the rear. They charge around the far turn. A strong out group being led by Get Out of My Kitchen, who leads by about a length now. Rita's Revenge is backed off in second. Secret City calls it a day. She's taboos moving forward. Angles from the rail to the two path. And Penzig is launching a rally on the extreme outside as they come down the stretch. Get Out of My Kitchen has three sixteenths more to get. She's taboo second. Penzig third. These three in contention. She Get out of my kitchen. Holding on to the lead. She's taboo. Gradually gaining ground and so is Penzig who catches the eye as Penzig goes by. Penzig coming home to win it and will give Christian Torres four wins today. Second, she's taboo. Get out of my kitchen was third. Art Queen rallies for fourth. Productive Sunday afternoon for Christian Torres. Leading rider at the meet with number four as you heard from Matt Dinnerman. Winning for Carl Broberg here, first off the claim. Yeah, very logical result for your leading rider, Christian Torres. Rallies uh, to get up late, and uh, no, no surprises here. This was a pretty formful uh, effort by the winner. Made that big move. Thought she was going to be awfully tough when you saw her making that move around the turn. She does not disappoint. Christian Torres continues to tear things up in Hot Springs. Torrid pace, and how about those purses at Hot Springs? He's having a pretty good time of it. Yeah, set a record actually last year too, over $6.1 million in earnings. He's doing very well, and been a productive move to wind up at Oakland. We're back next Thursday, three Eastern start time on FS2. We will see you then. It was Cup in the feature at Aqueduct. Dylan Davis had the rail and had a quick one.
gate to wire victory. Cup impressive in that seventh gun pilot for Steve Asmus. And this was win number three on the day for Christian Torres. He was not done yet. He had a fourth as we just saw in the finale. Gun pilot, though, looks like he might be headed for some stakes company after this performance. We will see you next week on Thursday at 3 Eastern.